She's yeah, working. She's okay. All right. We're in. Hold on. Let me just real quick. Oh, rad. Add videos. Oh, come on. You can do this. Yes, there it is. And it's got the thumbnail I wanted. Trust everything's nice. going up red today. Okay, and it's going, and it's, we're good, and let's <laughs> just get rid of it. <laughs> yes, I'm so good at this. All right. Belonging for pants is a pretty solid phrase. I can't take thanks. that from you. Why, thank you. Ah, yes. <laughs> That's just a good comedy. Uh, the, motto, uh, the, the motto of my, my house. Okay, let's, Mike is in, and let me just grab the, the phone so I can both see the chat mm -hmm. and also tweet the link. There it is. Hell yeah. Hey, chat. Welcome. Hello. Let me just okay. It's all it's all good. Normally I'd be all set up, but I had to add the giving to ah, this. We got someone who just came from the rolling with difficulty Q and A. Hey, hey. Hello, welcome to the second stream. <laughs> My second stream, your third of the day. Yeah, I'm making only good decisions today. All right, let me oh, just boy. <laughs> pop this sucker in onto the onto the onto the twitters, the tweets, the twits, as it were. <laughs> It's still a better name than it's, you know, I don't actually want to get into it. Oh, but it's so funny. Time. Come on. The low-hanging fruit is there now. for a reason. It makes me mad because, I guess we're talking about Twitter. Um, <laughs> that, is, that was the single most accessible and usable website for networking with other small creators, which mm -hmm. is how I booked a lot. Like, over half the guests from Moviestruck were booked through Twitter, and now it has become functionally unusable for that purpose, which means mm -hmm. I have had to struggle and connive to restart my <laughs> career because one asshole with a <gasps> complex was like oh what if i bought this website and made it my stupid little thing and ruined it for everybody else yeah so i'm mad about it and it makes me angry <laughs> as you should be all right hello everybody so yo, yo, yo. oh my god um all right so the general conceit of this stream is that we're just we're I'm going to be continuing my trend from last time, which is uh, we have a list of things that we're going to be doing in the Big O Charity stream later this month, and I'm not going to be doing any of those, but I have free reign of getting shrines and going to the depths, which is pretty good. Um, so uh, I thought we could go and maybe find some armor sets, uh, do some exploring, as we can see last time. Uh, we actually went pretty far. Uh... Oh, yeah, I forgot. That's right under the uh, Gerudo Temple. But, um, yeah, we, we went and fought Master Koga, and I wanted to get to the Great Leviathan Skeleton, but I kept nearly dying, and then I had to stop <laughs> streaming because it was wee hours in the morning. But today I am not a coward, so today <laughs> we're going to do the we're gonna do the fun thing. And there is a fundraiser attached to this video uh, for the... Uh, let me just see which one. Um, but basically... The island of Maui is currently on fire, and it's really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Like, as of this morning, this is this is current news. Um, and the charity I have attached to this video is matching donations up to uh, 250000 total. Uh, they originally said it, they were going to match up to 100000 and then they reached that this morning, which is really good. That, that means people are coming out in force to help out in a really needed way. Um, mm -hmm. But I thought we could... Sling some dollars their way with the awareness that anything that gets donated is going to be functionally doubled for the purposes of relief and rebuilding, which I think is pretty nice. Um, yeah. So if that's... Uh, it's a, yeah. It's good to be able to help with something that is happening. So currently it's really just trampling all over the lives of a lot of people who live there. Yeah. And um, anything that you can donate, if you're able, it's very much appreciated. And it's also very nice that this charity is going to double that uh, and match it. So... Yeah. Uh, thank. Oh my God. Thank you to Anonymous who just donated one thousand dollars. Oh shit. So, well, I guess I have to off to a roaring start. <laughs> I was gonna be like, at one thousand, let's go to the depths. Well, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> We're going right there. Let's uh, do so, it. Thank you to everyone uh, who donates. Uh, you will chat. You are correct. Fire is a bitch. Uh... <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's it's especially because of course, first of all, it's an island. Not really many places to mm -hmm. go. Secondly, it's just, oh boy, um, there's a hurricane forming uh, over the ocean, and the hurricane is not particularly close to Hawaii, but even if it's 800 miles away, the winds from it don't really have anything on the ocean to slow them down or break them up, so it's just, it's not good, so... Mm -hmm. It, there's gonna it's need a bad to situation. Yeah, right yeah. now it's in crisis mode. They're gonna need to do a lot of rebuilding after they get out of crisis mode. 
Um, this did not work out the way I wanted it to. And, oh, that also is not about to work out the way I wanted it to. On the other hand, it's good that those guys are just cobblin skeleton riders because I thought they were Lynels. <laughs> or at least one of them was a Lynel. Oh, wow. That's coming out in force today. That means we need to think oh. of something to do it for 2k, though. Um, so my plan was to... Uh, so, as you may know from Breath of the Wild and uh, our videos on Breath of the Wild and other people's videos on Breath of the Wild, uh, there are great leviathan skeletons in Breath of the Wild, and they're awesome. Uh, and basically... Hold on. There are also underground great leviathans. I was told last time that uh, Dazzle Fruit instantly kill all of the Bacoblins around them. Or, sorry, all really? the, the Skelemans. So, oh, I've, skeletons. I've been yeah. flagrantly abusing that uh, since I found that out in my... Uh, uh, well, hold on. We know the trick with these things, don't we? Um, we're gonna drop you, we're gonna equip you, and now we're going to have... an arm stick. <laughs> Good, yes, everything's coming together. All right. Yeah. Yes. Um, this is going back a while, but I did see someone in chat ask why I dislike fishing mini games more than brewing <laughs> mini games. Yes, I don't want to further go on record with. My problem with fishing mini games is not the mechanic of the game or how it feels to play it. Uh, it's just that I really don't like fishing. <laughs> I just really don't want to have to fish in a video game. I'm don't playing this to have fun. If I wanted to fish, I would go fishing. I don't like going fishing. Why would I want to do it in a video game? <laughs> do not inflict the world's most personal... boring sport on me. I have no beef with brewing, and therefore I have no problem with brewing mini games. It's I just don't like the fish. I think there should be fewer fishing mini games. I don't get why there's so many of them. I have got to stop wasting my dazzle fruits. In my other game, I have like five million of them. But here, mm. I am but a poor boy from the Americas. I have only three that in was... my name. Nothing hurt me more. There are two things in this game that really hurt me. It was um, Rivali's Gale not existing, and the fact that I couldn't just get more bombs by going to a shop and getting bomb arrows. And I'm like, oh my god, why do I never have any of these bomb flowers? Yeah. It's rough. No, no. Leave me alone, little frox things. Eh! Ugh. Oh, they're not as bad as the big ones, but I still don't like them very much. I was talking about the Great Leviathans. So I wanted to go to the Great Leviathan Those underground skill. They kind of seem fish-like. No, they're, uh, I think they're supposed to be like Whales? toads no. or something. Stop well. playing the combat music. I pretend I do not see it. I've actually heard that Dredge is pretty good, chat. I understand it is a fishing game. Oh, which is right. why I have not sought it out, but uh, I don't know, maybe someday. <laughs> now I remember what I was going to do. Get whatever this is. I have thing been is. to the um the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid in Tennessee. <laughs> I've been there. I've been inside. It's my, my. crazy. Oh, uh, uh both I was with both my brothers and my dad on the Great American Road Trip as we've dubbed it, where we we were driving around to different national parks and camping and hiking and it was extremely cool and like it was like a movie for two months of our lives. Uh, and then also on the way back we needed somewhere to stop in Tennessee, so we went to the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid because it was there and we saw we were driving by. It's full of fish! There's a lot of fish in there. <laughs> Sorry, I just got jump scared by a toad. Nice. Nice. I hate the noises they're making. <laughs> Sorry. They're so unsettling. Um, anyway, uh, so the, the, the great trip to the uh, Bass Pro Shop did not sway your thoughts on the pros and cons of fishing as a profession or a sport? No, uh, I think it was neat to look at fish inside, but, um, <laughs> you know, I don't think I need felt the urge to catch said fish. I, I, this is no hate to anyone who does like to fish, just don't make me fish too, you know? <laughs> of course. Because <laughs> I think a part of this is that my whole family are big fishers. Um, so uh, all of my childhood, anytime we'd be down the shore, it's like, well, we're all going fishing today because the boys want to, and so, Sophia, you have to come to. Um, the boys is our nickname for my two younger brothers. And, of course. uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, this is not a gender thing, it's just that there were two of them, and so it was easier to just refer to them in the abstract than to name every individual <laughs> child. Uh, 
<laughs> that is the number one and, way to um, guarantee that you not get into something, is to have siblings that are way more into it than you are. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I just, and I was always like, oh, I have to do this. I do like crabbing, which is where you just drop a trap in the ocean, and then you sit there and you read for half an hour, and then you're like, I don't know, did I catch anything? <laughs> That is a whole other story. Fishing, too active. It's too active and passive all at once. Mm. Too boring and not boring enough. <laughs> too boring, but I have to be paying attention to it, which makes me unable to do something else that I might be more interested in while it's happening. Oh yeah, that is kind of ADHD fish. hell. The touch of fish. <laughs> no, thank you. Texture, no bueno. I leave it to someone else. I lit up the depth so quickly on my first run that I truly forget how deeply unnerving it is. Oh, it's terrifying. I've never really been one to be, like, truly afraid of the dark. Uh, it's something that didn't even occur to me until somebody asked me when I was in preschool, like, are you afraid of the dark? And I was like, oh, should I be? And then I had a slight fear of just, you know, the unknown, but... <laughs> something about this, I don't like. And especially because we're in the Gerudo Desert Depths, which is like, of course, well, on the overworld map, which we can't see in more than the abstract, but, like, it's just this massive flat expanse of nothing. And, of course, yeah. the depths is a mirror of the surface. So it's still a big flat expanse of nothing. <laughs> so terrifying. <sighs> but let's get it up, <sighs> lit up a little bit. So, yes, I'm... My goal is to, at least for this first part of the stream, make my way to the uh, underground Great Leviathan... Uh, because nice. all of them have a treasure chest at the head. Um, haven't gotten the sensor yet, because um, last time I streamed, it seems like a lot of things only unlock after you do one of the four dungeons, which I didn't know because I did the four dungeons really fast in my 100%, uh, mm -hmm. by which I mean like 58% save. Um, so that was, that was pretty rough, <laughs> but... Uh, <sighs> Where are we going? Tony Hawk challenges you to do a fishing contest for a billion dollars. What do you do? Uh, I lose a fishing contest to Tony Hawk. <laughs> I feel like it's no contest. Uh, I like the. I have just, another great story. <laughs> I like this assumption that somehow Tony Hawk is your nemesis, when in actuality, it's it's clearly some kind of like you fear to become him. Because you fear yeah, that you cannot no, I, become him. I'm not afraid of Tony Hawk. I'm afraid of being me with my level of skateboard ability and having a, to exist in a world where I have to do his job. Yeah, but That's everyone sees you as Tony Hawk. It's a nightmare. I don't know. I think it's just that I have to do his job. Because in uh, the nightmare, people are just like, they're hyping me up to do the skateboard tricks, but they're not like saying, go Tony. It's just like, God, do the skateboard trick. I'm like, okay, got it. I got it. <laughs> Uh-oh. What was that I said about not wasting my dazzle fruits? Hmm, here it comes. Say goodbye. Ha <laughs> ha! Holy shit, it worked. Well, this is awesome. How am I related to Tony Hawk? Uh, You're not? Not not technically. <laughs> not even a little bit, really. All right, fuck I have it. a We're recurring nightmare where I have to do his job. I've talked about it on stream before. What it's the? One of the silliest aspects of my life. I, <laughs> I'm not actually related to Tony Hawk in any way. He wouldn't know who I was. Or if he did, it means that something has been going very fucky oh, on God. With, uh, dreams and whatnot. Oh no, are these Gibdos? Yeah. Oh, fuck Ooh. this. Where the hell am I? You're in the desert, baby. Get me out of here! Oh, thank God for my noble steed. Alright, that's enough. Holy crap, I just sped through the <laughs> In the dark, without having- without being able to throw, um, fucking light thingies. And it's like, wait, I know these enemies. Oh, God. Cool, that was terrifying. But we are closer to where I wanted to go, I think. Oh, that's good. Unless I went in the wrong direction. My association with Tony Hawk did result in the day that this game came out. Um, so many people 
Patty me and being like, did you see they invented Tony Hawk Pro Skater in Zelda? And I'm like, yes, I did see the thing where you can fuse a cart to your shield and go pro Tony Oh, Hawk there are pro so skater. many ways you can be a Tony Hawk Pro Skater, though. Oh no, is that a Colosseum? Ah. No, that's bad. We don't want to do a Colosseum. <laughs> I am but a poor boy from the Americas. <laughs> I wish I could figure out how to get this guy to the surface. That is Hundo P a Coliseum. We're gonna respectfully decline. I know that you're supposed to play this game by like building fun vehicles. And I do love building fun yeah. vehicles, but you know what I like more? Not doing that. Yeah. I feel like I mean this to myself as kindly as possible, but I am just too stupid to be really like building cool vehicles in this game. <laughs> Mm. Like, I just do not have the kind of engineering mind to conceive of how the things could fit together. And I think that that's okay, because I can still play the game and get through it and have a good time, you know? I've had some luck uh, with various, like, structures that I've built. Uh-oh. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, wait a minute. Is the Traveler's hmm? Sword not... Oh, no, okay. An undecayed Traveler's Sword is seven. A decayed Traveler's Sword is five. We can gotcha. probably drop this one. I, I hate to lose the topaz, but it's basically already lost. Uh, we'll be so far into the game before I can get the ability to separate it out. Um, mm. Anyway, yes, I've had some luck building fun vehicles. Oh, wait, where's my boy? There he is. Wow, this makes things a lot easier. <laughs> um, uh... But I've seen how people play the game when they get really ham on the uh, on the various constructs where it's like, I built something that automatically kills this boss for me. And it's like, it's so cool that you did that. I am not going to do that, I think. I, I experimented <laughs> with it. Oh, oh shit. Well, <laughs> take two. Uh, Actually, what am I doing hand. climbing things? I have magic for that. But it's so fun and instinctive. <laughs> yes, but so is Ascend at this point. <laughs> I just gotta shake the rust off, you know how it is. Um, but again, it's, it's another case of like, like if you do the Zonite, stop it. Uh, if you do the Zonite constructs like well enough, it, it almost borders on speedrun strats, which I have a strict no speedrun strats policy because uh, I find they impede my ability to get immersed in the plot and enjoy the game. Yes. Link, my man, you gotta just, it's not that hard. Just walk along the bird ray. All right, thank you. So this is the Gerudo as Dark known... Skeleton. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as a known, um, I must see every line of dialogue, every <laughs> item description, every piece of written text in this video game. Uh, person, yeah, I can never speedrun strat in a playthrough. I'm like, I gotta see everything. I haven't played any of Baldur's Gate 3 because I don't have a system that can functionally run it without sacrificing the sanctity of my work desktop. Um, but. Every day I inch closer and closer to breaking that self-imposed rule for the sake of all of the possible dialogue options. Like, that's a game that could take me literal years to complete to a state where I feel confident about having Yeah, that was a scary thought. That game. What the hell is that? I'm still working on Fire Emblem. Of course. Okay. No, Link. Okay, cool. Oh! Link, get it together. That is an ascend point. We can use that to get back to the surface if we want to be in the middle oh, of the Gerudo yeah. Desert, which we desperately do not right now. Where the hell I don't is know this thing's head? head, though. Hold on. Let's see what we can see on the map. Okay. Oh, right. I remember. Uh, yeah. We want. We want here. Here is where we want. Where's our horse? Mm hmm. All right. I, I got. Him. I'll find him. Well, we did- oh god. Hold on, there's gloom hands over there. Yeah, there is. I was wondering when you would see those. <laughs> They're so much creepier in the depths. Oh god, I hate that. Hold on, where's my camera? Another situation where dazzle fruit is extremely useful and also becomes more of a commodity. <laughs> Ooh, I hate them. Ooh, I hate them. This is why- <laughs> I was like, why do I have all this muscle memory to instinctively let me go really high up in this game? Oh, right! <laughs> I like your completely black photo you just took. <laughs> no, it wasn't completely black. It's like backlit against the environment. You guys saw that, right? <laughs> it's just a super like low exposure, you know? It's, it's completely visible. It might be, mm. you know what? 
this might be brighter on my TV than it is on the screen. <laughs> Uh, on my laptop, yeah, it's looking a little small. <laughs> oh, I, I see. All right, well, I can kind of see where I'm going, and that's really all that's important. <laughs> I still don't know where the fuck my horse is, though, and I think the gloom hands might be between me and it. Almost certainly. Good luck. <laughs> all right, we're, we're legging it. We're going on foot. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> ah, fuck, that's a lot of gloom. No, it's fine. We're fine. It's fine. Everything is... Fine. That's a band. Everything's camp. going just great. We're gonna We're do this. Having an amazing time. <laughs> We're gonna do this the way nature intended, by fucking sprinting. <laughs> Book it. Just walk out. You can leave. <laughs> you can leave at any time. <laughs> That's the best thing about being an adult. You can just get out of places. Oh yeah, I recently um, went down the shore and I was staying with my dad and his girlfriend at her shore house and it was me and my boyfriend and my brother and I had a moment of realization of like, oh, we are adults and could just choose to like go get pancakes this morning. We don't have to, like, we're not beholden to anyone else who is at this house right now. We can just like leave and do things. And that, that was is... so yeah. freeing. That's one of the strangest parts of like being an adult while staying with your parents is like yes. sort of yes. navigating the duality of like, I am still who I was the you know when i was a child in this house and yet when also <laughs> yes all right hold on yeah it's it's so it's a weird yeah. base to occupy and it was very freeing in many ways and i had an i had a really fantastic time and i i like my dad i like his girlfriend a lot so i don't think it you know it's never like felt like i was fleeing a situation or no. anything it really was just was like oh this is a way of being on vac a family vacation that I have never experienced before, and I'm pretty into it. I think this is a good time. <laughs> yeah, especially in the context of family vacation. Oh, nope. Nope, 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 nope. We're good. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Doing okay there, buddy? I'm good. Everything's cool. I'm so ready to fight these things. Man, did you cease? Shit, did I hit it? Okay, I did. Huh? <sighs> you know what? We're gonna use the fuck it, let's get out of here button. Later, fuckos! Okay, we're good. Adios. <laughs> Later, bitches. Ha! Mission accomplished. Okay, now let's find that treasure chest. Ah. Yeah. Been watching anything fun lately? Ooh, I found it. Um, I want to say yes, but today has been so busy that for the life of me, I cannot particularly spring anything to mind. <laughs> um, I have been watching DS9. Ah. I pretend I do not see it. If we do not see it, it is not real. Whoa! Hell yeah. Got a little something some? Yeah, got the tunic of the wild. Hell All right. yeah. Well, we did the thing I wanted to do. Great. We yeah. can all go home now. <laughs> We're done. That's it. We can all go home to our families. Just kidding, there's more. Okay, let's see. <laughs> uh, p -p 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 we do want to explore the depths. We've been here, because we fought Master Koga there. And we've been here, because we also fought Master Koga there. I like that your depths experience is just a series of running into Master Koga. <laughs> well, it's because that's the one that like gives you directions. They're like, you should do this. And I'm like, yes. Um, hmm. Well, you have to understand, officer, they gave me a quest marker, so I simply <laughs> had to. Now, the problem is, I desperately do not want to deal with all the shit that's in the, uh, in the Gerudo Depths. <laughs> <laughs> but you're here already. Mm, I am. I sure am. Oh, please. Mm -hmm. Come on, just let me up, just let me up, just let me up. Oh, thank you to Saf Witch for a donation of two hundred dollars. Thank you to everyone who has been donating as well. We're almost to two K already. Hot which damn! Is absolutely incredible. Yeah, I gotta um, figure out something to do at two K. We go fight some gloom hands or something. Ooh, how about we don't do that? 
Oh, you could. It's an option. Did I get a new bow? I didn't. What an oversight on my part. I do want to do more shrines at some point. Oh, God, everything's so spooky down here. Oh, I don't like it. Yes, I do. Hey. Hey, stop eating my bright blooms. You menaces. Get out of there. Have I watched any Transformers? No, that is one of the childhood media properties that I completely missed. Just Ooh. didn't watch any of it. I have no nostalgia for it. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, Red, I know you have, I think, more of an understanding of the Transformers than I do. Just a little bit. I've watched Transformers Prime. Ooh, let's try and get that light route. Operative word being try. This is a suspiciously large flat space, which means something's going to go catastrophically wrong. Um, you never know. But, uh, yeah, I I was not a Transformers kid, but somebody uh, recommended Transformers Prime. Basically, they were like, oh, there, you mentioned this oddly... Fuck. Sorry. <laughs> we killed a Frox last time, and it was not easy. No, they're quite Hold a task. Hold on. Let's see. I only have seven arrows. Uh, only six bombs. Okay, yeah, we're not going to do that. There's so much gloom everywhere. I just want to go around it. <laughs> you were saying about Transformers? We're just going to fucking sprint. Ha! <laughs> ah, my bones! Okay, cool. That, <laughs> that didn't do what I wanted it to. <laughs> Great. Everything's going wonderfully. Floor is lava, floor is lava, floor is lava. Ah! Um, but yes, uh, so somebody recommended, like, oh, they were like, Oh, you, you mentioned this oddly specific trope. <laughs> Jesus Christ. On Twitter. <laughs> leave me alone, leave me alone. <laughs> the new hard mode for the game where Red has to try and also talk about Transformers while playing a portion of the game in which she is mostly running. Alright, fuck it. <laughs> We're just gonna leave. <laughs> that light route will wait until later. <laughs> oh my god. About to be out. Okay. We've got all these places we can go. All of them mm. better than here. Uh, what's this area? There's definitely shrines we can get in this area. That would be a nice, respectful, chivalric thing for us to do. Um, <laughs> but yes, I mentioned that... Uh, I, I think it was like the specific trope episode... Like, there's a stock episode format where a character gets like put in like a now I hunt the most dangerous game, like death game survival scenario. Mm -hmm. Uh it's, it's always a little bit weird because it doesn't quite fit the vibe of the rest of the show. It's always a little jarring. Uh, but it is often one of the best episodes of that series because it provides this incredibly, like... Like, you see a character in a context you don't normally... That's going to be gone by the time we get there, but we can still try. Um, <laughs> you see a character in a context you don't normally get to see them, which is always exciting. Um, and person uh, on Twitter was like, Oh, there's an episode of Transformers Prime that does that. That's fun. And I was like, that is fun. Uh, and I watched just that episode with no context. And I, I, the last time we did the podcast, uh, I mentioned that I think that that's the best way to experience certain shows, like Star Trek. You, um, mm -hmm. you just kind of hit an episode randomly. Stop it. I pretend I do not see it. Link. <laughs> Link. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> pretend harder. Um, uh, and... Uh, so I just jumped straight into, like, episode 12, season 1, and, uh, mm -hmm. it was a really cool episode with some interesting characters, and I was- No! No! Oh, thank god. Hold on. I was almost so sad. <laughs> but we got almost. it. We're fine. It's cool. Oh, god. Just um, got close enough that the beam stopped. Yes. <laughs> but I was so scared. Uh, and so I didn't know who the characters were. And uh, everything I was getting about their backstory, I was learning in the moment from context clues, from them just, you know, talking to each other about stuff that they already knew, which is, I think, one of the best ways that you can communicate uh, exposition in a world is to have characters who both know the information not go, like, as you know, Bob, but just, like, talk about it. Or, like, one of them has an emotional reaction to it, the other one doesn't understand because there's something about the situation they don't know. Um, anyway, it was a really good way for me to get immersed in the... Uh, series and I got curious about the rest of it and I just ended up watching it all in linear order and it was really good so um I've heard people describe it as it's like the Michael Bay Transformers but like good which uh a mm. little hard to know how to take that but um <laughs> oh 
I don't know how to tell you this, but the chat is saying that we're approaching something called the Shrine of Hands. That feels... Oh! Oh, God! And it also hit 2K, so... Things are happening. Fuck off! Hey, we did just hit 2K, maybe you should fight those hands. I disagree, but I respect that you hold that opinion. <laughs> I should let you all know that Ziggy has decided to make her obligatory Indigo is talking into the microphone, so I must appear moment. She's sitting on my lap right now. Good, She's good. been shedding a lot this week. Um, I think it's just a moment for her. And, uh... Yeah, my lap is going to be covered in cat hair in about two seconds. Sometimes it gets up my nose when I'm recording, and that's unfortunate. <laughs> mm. You know what I'm going to say? It's very cruel of them to put gloom hands in an area where I'm pretty sure it's always at least a little bit rainy. Because <laughs> that makes it very hard to just climb a wall and wait them out. The number one way to avoid gloom hands. I had that froggy armor, baby. Best quest line in the game. <laughs> Did it disappear? I think they just have a certain radius in which they'll chase you, and then it's like... Well, but then they turn into dark clumps, which are a valuable asset. Yes! It disintegrated from shame! <laughs> Give me your bits. Does it not summon a phantom Ganon when it just turns into the dark clump? No! That's what I've been saying! These would be better if they were worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah! Thank you. Bye! Okay, great. Good work, team. Now, how the fuck... Ugh, I guess I could use a rocket shield, but must I? <laughs> must I demean myself so? So since we did hit 2k, which again, thank you to everyone who's been donating, uh, your support means a lot, and it is very much appreciated by those yeah. who will be helping. Um, what are we doing? <laughs> it's a really good question. Chat, you guys got any ideas? Um, okay, I think when the rain clears, I'll be able to get up here. Uh, I think. I feel can like you ascend? I I do have a send, but it's a little high up. It's it's just maybe we can maybe we can cheese it. Maybe we can find the exact right. Nope, it's it's purposefully put just out of ascension reach. But I want to go uppies. <laughs> maybe if we get like right under the root. I think that's why they put the root right down here, because otherwise you could theoretically just ascend through it. Mm. But I want to do it. It's what I want to do. All right, hold on. Oh wait, I think we can be clever about this because like that that's a that's basically an insert ascension here signal and i think what we might mm. be able to do is use some of these handy dandy building materials to give us a platform that we might be able to uh cheese our way through we're getting gliok fight we're getting throw hands with the hands we're getting selfie with dragon Ooh. We're getting mostly throw hands with hands. Of course we are. Uh, I like the selfie with dragon idea more than throwing hands with hands, guys. I'm just saying, it could be fun. I, I have been trying to make it a goal, because these streams are broadly grocery run streams, you know? Like, they're, they're prep work for this stuff. Um, and I would like to... Oh, hold on. Great, it stopped raining. All of that is irrelevant now. Um, <laughs> uh... Oh, fuck. Sorry, it's been a very long day. <laughs> um, selfie with uh, Gliok, that could be an option. Selfie with Gliok could be fun. I think I have- no, Link, come on. Come on, come on, it's right there. Yes, good, excellent. Uh, basically, there are a lot of materials you can collect from a dragon's back. Uh, I would like to- when one of those dragons flies into one of those holes in the ground, I would like to follow Hop on their back, tank a little bit of environmental damage, or avoid getting struck by lightning. Uh, and just collect some, like, back spikes, because that makes a really easy way to get some pretty powerful elemental weapons early in the game. Mm. But we should probably also fight some hands. Oh, hello up there. A uh, question for Indigo and Red. Have either of you played any Soulsborne games? No. Uh, I tried to play Dark Souls, and I got too mad at it. I know it's, like, <laughs> gamer homework, but... I don't know. It wasn't for me. I can appreciate that it's a good game and like really artfully made and still have it not be for me. I kind of feel the same way about it. I feel about some movies where I'm like, well, this is objectively good, but it's just not my cup of tea. Yeah. I have never played it. Uh, doesn't look like it would be particularly fun for me, and everyone I've seen play it has gotten deeply frustrated with it, which is generally a bad sign. 
It's like my brother's all-time favorite game series, like, when Elden Ring came out, he basically just disappeared from the face of the earth for a full week, and, uh, <laughs> and I suspected, like, I'm like, oh, this is just not that game series for me. It's mm. like, oh, this is cool, I'm glad that you have this, um, it's just not the kind of, like, gaming that I really love, as I tend to be more of, like, a lore person, and it does feel like a game where it's rewarding you for being good at the controls more so than it's rewarding you for being, like, or, like, being good for, like, reading the character coding and everything, and it, that's a really cool way to learn and do gameplay, and I understand why so many people like it, it's just not my preferred type of gameplay, I'm more of a, like, gotta catch them all, gotta collect them all, gotta, like, <laughs> fill in something... Uh, kind of person. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What are other good best picture movies you should watch? If you haven't watched How Great Is My Valley, that's the best one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that one is a, such a sleeper hit for me. No one has ever referenced it to me in my life, and it is such a fantastic movie. Like, it's a union drama. Very, Ooh. very per pertinent. Um, it's got, like, just like an incredibly wholesome and loving yet complex family. It's at, at once both like heartwarming and real in a way that a lot of movies really struggle with. I feel like they kind of go too hard in either being so real it's sad or- So heartwarming um, it's saccharine. So heartwarming, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's just a perfect balance of the two. It's just a very like true to life description. Um, all of the acting is phenomenal. I, I cannot recommend that movie enough. Uh, Wings, also similarly really good if you haven't seen it. Um, cool piece of film history. I'm reading a book right now about the making of Wings because I think it's just, I, I genuinely like, I just want to consume more about this movie. Um, other good ones, hold on, let me pull up my, let me pull up my list. Let me pull up my little notes app hmm. list of movies. <laughs> I bailed out on this list around the 70s. I think the next one I had to watch was The French Connection. I'll pick it back up at some point, but um, it was just sort of... That's when I started having too much work to do to be watching, like, two movies a day. Right. Um, or I had to watch movies from Movie Struck, and I was like, oh, I can't. I, can't, I gotta watch another Bionicle movie. I can't watch, <laughs> the, I can't watch the French Connection. Entirely um, a hell of your own creation. Yes. Let me go down to the part of the list where I was sorting them into whether I liked them or not. I was taking notes on these movies. A little bit of scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Ah. Ooh, hole in one. Uh, it Happened One Night is a really fun comedy. Uh, that's two people go on a kind of like, kind of strangers on a trainee, but with less murder. Um, you Can't Take It With You. I'm a little biased on this one because I worked on a production of You Can't Take It With You when I was in high school and it's one of my all-time favorite shows that I've worked on. Um, definitely has a, an, a couple instances of old movie might be slightly problematic or aged imperfectly, but mm. the core of the story is still really good and it doesn't do anything so egregious that it veers into unwatchable territory. Um, and it's very heartwarming um, and still very funny. Uh, hmm. Casablanca is a classic. You can't go wrong with it. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed Gentleman's Agreement. Uh, I thought I was not going to, and it was actually a good time. So, same with All About Eve, which is uh, just a really thrilling version of this woman taking over another's life, and it's twisty and tense and kind of psychological in a fun way. Uh, and American in Paris, always fantastic. It's just a classic movie musical. It, it's incredible. Um, I, I'm so happy when it popped up because so many of the other movie musicals have just been bad. And mm. it was like, I was like, oh god, I just watched Gigi. Oh, thank god, it's American Paris. <laughs> um, I was pleasantly surprised by how much I liked Marty, but I think that might just be because it was an Italian-American movie, and I was like, ah, yay. Hey. Uh, hey. And the song Hey Marty is very catchy. <laughs> it's also blissfully short compared to some of the other winners on this list. Um, the Sound of Music is a classic, and In the Heat of the Night is a really fantastic, um, kind of similar to Gentleman's Agreement, where like these are just two great movies that are doing commentary and exploring social issues in a way that is at once both nuanced and uh, doesn't feel too philosophical to become irrelevant. Like it just stay in a very, it's grounded in a very real way that makes it um, watch watchable and interesting and like. The performances in the heat of the night especially are all fantastic. Uh, the most shocking thing about it is 
that um, the line in The Lion King, they call me Mr. Pig, that Pumbaa yells is a, quote, parodying, parodying in the heat of the night when he yells. <laughs> when huh. He's like, oh, they call me Mr. Tibbs. I'm like, oh, wait, The Lion King is referencing this um movie about, like, racism in, <laughs> in policing in Southern America. That's and, always like, one of the weirder huh. things. Like, whenever, whenever you have a movie where it's like, oh, you know, it's for kids, but it's got, like jokes that only the grown-ups will get and it's like that kind of joke i'm always like why like why yeah <laughs> why would you do I that was like, <laughs> like it's not even all that funny <laughs> it's not funny <laughs> it's an incredible dramatic moment in in the heat of the night but it's it's nothing in the lion king <laughs> it's just it's just an odd um, way to say something <laughs> yeah there were a couple other movies are like that were like beautifully crafted but were just incredibly depressing or really slow so you really only should watch them if you're really invested in like cinema as art um this is where like all quiet on the western front the life of emile zola miss mm. miniver kind of fall into um there's a version of hamlet uh, one best picture that's very like standard hamlet <laughs> uh a lot of the war movies fall into this category we got like on the waterfront uh not on the waterfront um that's in this category but it's unrelated Hmm. But Bridge on the River Kwai, Lawrence of Arabia, Patton, that's all kind of in this category. Sorry, I'm just trying to remember where the Elden Great Skeleton is. <laughs> just trying to enter my mind <laughs> okay. palace. I think it's like in that general area. Oh god, we're gonna have to go so far. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of the... Like, I was pleasantly surprised by how many of the older winners of Best Picture still stood up uh, to the test of time. Like, are there a fair amount like up and until the 70s which is as far as i got my watch through before i kind of bailed out and had to do other things um there were only six movies that aged so poorly i put them in the never rewatch category <laughs> um <laughs> aged Always so poorly or were just like that. so incredibly unwatchable or just like boring to the point where i don't think they're justifying their status um and yeah and like the kind of just okay category is also very small on this list like a majority of the winners were either so feel good and fun that i love them or beautifully crafted but i could recognize like the art in them there's something to be watching like a sad movie from time to time um justification in the art leave me alone stop it sorry everything's good and fine <laughs> stop it stop it Opinions on the Spy Kids movies. Turn them on, baby. This thing's right. <laughs> Crank that shit. Ooh. Crank that shit. I mean, I don't know why the third one felt like it was constantly on. <laughs> like, I feel like I could have turned on the TV at any point in the early 2000s, and Spy Kids 3 was always playing. Um, but I love those movies. Those and, like, Shark Boy and Lava Girl and Sky High were, like, Little Indigo's all time favorite movies by a, a long, large margin. <laughs> What do we got? What are the six good questions? Let me pull that note back up. I just closed it. Um, the six movies that mm. were so uh, unwatchable even after time went just by. Got an idea. Where did my list go? Ah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> yes. I, I have Feel my, my power. I should pin it. I haven't edited it in a while, so it's pretty far down. Hold on. Wait a minute. I have the power to search. The power is yours. What is with all these rocks dropping everywhere? There's like eight of them right here. Wait, is there something like... Scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, yeah, I guess there is. Well, now I'm curious. Okay, the six movies that I deemed were incredibly unwatchable, uh, didn't age well. Most of these are in this category because they just really didn't age well because they were either racist or sexist or homophobic to the point of just being unwatchable. Right. Um, I put them in the, the exact title of this category is Oops, These Didn't Age Well, Only Watch If You're Really Living That Completionist Lifestyle. Um, the Broadway Melody, Samarian, Samaron? I don't know how to say that. I've, I heard someone talk about the horse movie and it's whatever that is. Huh. Um, the oh. Great Ziegfeld, Gone with the Wind, Ben-Hur, and A Man for All Seasons. Um, I could make an argument for Ben-Hur being moved into the above category, but honestly, I didn't enjoy it at all, so I put it down there. A Man for All Seasons was just so ungodly dull. <laughs> like, nothing happened. Ooh, what'd you find? Uh, got a treasure map. This is oh. gonna take me so fucking far. <laughs> 
right. All right. Not bad. Not something to do. Yeah. Um, the Broadway melody was cool because it had a lot of like musical scenes, um, but it otherwise was just like one, <laughs> one over the top. Broadway producer who was like an asshole to everyone around him and then it's like ah look at all of these things we did I'm like okay Bravo. and the great Ziegfeld was very similar of like oh Ziegfeld great Broadway producer circus man ha 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 and it's like no this guy was like a, a jerk <laughs> he's being awful to everyone around him and at the end they're all like wow we really miss him I'm like no it's weird how that happens a lot yeah Gone with the Wind is probably the one I think is the most problematic of everything on this list. Uh, that makes with sense. Samaran or Samarian, probably a close second. Ooh, um, maybe Nazis. It's not the Stallion of the Samarian movie, because that didn't win Best Picture. It's just called Samar Samarin, Samarin. Samarin. I don't know how to say it. Samarin, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I um, missed. All right, we'll try that again. Kinda just okay category has some that I feel like some people would really love and I personally was just like, nah, this is fine. Which is why it exists. Like, Mutiny on the Bounty is kind of a fun naval movie, ship movie, and if you like that stuff, I think you would really like it. Uh, but I was just like, I don't really care about this movie. <laughs> mm. Ooh, internal chest. Yeah, all of these little guys, I think, have chests in them. Uh, at least every one I've checked. Yeah. Alright, where's the nearest rock that I can use to gain uppies? Um, I would not consider myself a classic film expert. I've just watched a lot of movies, and I host a movie podcast, so this is all I think about all the time. <laughs> it just kind of happens. Yeah. I, if I was going to say I'm an expert in any genre of movies, it would be um, probably the specific Jiangshi monster subgenre of Hong Kong horror cinema in the 80s and 90s, because that's what I wrote my college thesis on. Other than that, um, no, I, got no. <laughs> I would never claim to be an expert in anything. I can only speak based on what I've seen and observed. Um. <laughs> All right. Such a surplus of rocks, a full bounty. Great. All right, let's get that shrine, and then let's jump down that hole. Yeah. Seeing as I see we've reached 2K while I wasn't looking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we reached 2K a while ago. That's why we were talking about 2K rewards. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the fifth big commitment I had today, and I added, I did this to myself. <laughs> I was oh. so surprised when I saw that tweet. <laughs> Hold on, let's see. Is Are this... there any classics you feel like it shouldn't be classics? Gone with the wind. Not good. <laughs> It's so incredibly problematic. It glorifies a time in American history that should under no circumstances be glorified. Mm -hmm. I don't care if the dresses are pretty or if it's super fucking long. It's not. No, it shouldn't be a classic. No. <laughs> it makes me mad that it is. <sighs> yeah. On the flip side, in terms of classics that really are that good, I just finished The Count of Monte Cristo. Like, I was getting oh, through nice. it as an audiobook. It fucking slaps. It's like audiobook over the course of like several months is the right way to do it. Because, mm. oh man, it is, it's so powerful, but it's so precisely designed for episodic release. Uh, it, there's oodles of dramatic irony. And like the whole thing is like, I'm going to show you this completely undeserving man suffering the worst injustice. And you're going to spend the next 100 chapters waiting for him to get his revenge. And it's going to be awesome. And it's funny, because the way people frame it, it's like, oh, Edmund realizes when his machinations get an innocent child killed that revenge is bad. And it's like, yeah, he does realize that. He does finish his revenge, though. <laughs> like, he doesn't stop. Like, just about the only thing he does is he doesn't kill the last guy. He just nearly starves that guy to death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nearly being the operative word. <laughs> oh. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Huh? Oh, hold on. Maybe we can... Maybe we can... Yeah. Okay, okay. I thought we had to be clever, maybe fuse it to the ball and then let it float up, but it turns out we could just pick it up. Oh, <laughs> I'm in danger. Oh. Well, thank you, Ben. Any thoughts on it? Uh, also, a play I worked on in high school. <laughs> hmm. It's really good. It's a... They got... They're like, oh, what if we get some of, like, the best actors um, at playing these roles and have... And just do, like, an incredibly tense well-designed 
box episode of a movie, and it's fantastic. It's really, really good. That's one of my favorite, um, like, crossover event things. Like, when you see an old movie, you don't necessarily realize why uh, they're putting so much focus on, like, one guy, or, like, Mm -hmm. why someone's entrance goes on a little bit longer than you expect. And oftentimes you look it up and it's like, oh, this guy was, like, the hottest shit in the world at the time. And there's, like, eight other guys just as hot in the same room. Walter Pigeon, iconic star of two Best Picture winners. (laughs) Yes, man who won my award for that's not a real name at all. (laughs) I don't know if it's a real name or a stage name, but it's what he's credited on on IMDb. Oh my god, stage Um, name would be even funnier. (laughs) Like the noble pigeon. (laughs) A man choosing to be named Walter Pigeon. He's really good, too. He's a talented actor. Of course. He plays Hot Preacher in How Green Is My Valley and uh, Mr. Miniver in Miss Miniver, which is also very good, but it's like a little bit more of a slow war drama thing, so if you're not in the mood for it, it's maybe not the go-to. What is happening? Alright, that's enough of that. Stop that. Uh, what app do I use? Um, just just the notes app that comes with uh, the iPhone. That's what I was making my list of movies on. I'm not a super organized person. I just needed something that I could type onto. I wish I had a better answer. <laughs> um, thoughts on whether peppers belong on a cheesesteak? Uh, I would say no. As a native Philadelphian, generally, peppers not uh, something I would pick. I'm a pretty... This is nauseating. <laughs> I remember uh, rage quitting this shrine on my playthrough. Really? <laughs> like, I saw you doing the bounce, and I'm just like, mm, no, not even a little bit. <laughs> Link gets through it and just like, oh, give me a second. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a pretty purist when it comes to my cheesesteak. I like to just kind of keep it simple. Walter President was the tenth. Well, Walter Pigeon was the tenth president of the Screen Actors Guild. The ninth, Ronald Reagan. <laughs> oh my Take God! Take that, Reagan. Walter Pigeon coming in hot. <laughs> we could have lived in the beautiful timeline with President Pigeon. Ah, fuck. Well, uh, that's probably fine. Yeah. Wish people talked about best animated films more. I was thinking when I, cause I started doing my watch through of all of the best picture winners in the depths of the pandemic it was before i started movie struck so i really didn't have any guide to what movies i should be watching um and uh you know i was like oh if i finish all these best picture winners which category should i do next because i really like this kind of like imposed i don't have to think about it i can just pick the next one on the list kind of angle and i was thinking about maybe doing animated pictures because one thing there's fewer of them and also there's some very cool pieces of animation that has one um but i think if you want to see some really cool innovation in animation check out the animated shorts category from past years because there are some really fantastic art pieces that end up in the uh shorts category that often get overlooked because they are short the one that won this year i was really mad about because uh, i went to see a compilation of all the animated shorts with my boyfriend at a like local theater that was screening them and the one that won is the only one we both turned to each other and we're like wow Oops. this thing is Shit. long and boring i sure hope literally anything else will-. but of course it did not of course it was not that was not the case uh, let me just uh, let me just <sighs> sorry fellas <laughs> Oh no, wait, I just realized! Why did I attack them during a blood moon? I don't know, dude, live your life. Well, I got some stuff, I guess. When the glow of the blood stains your living life. Ugh, Zelda, please, not now. The aimless spirits of slain monsters. Come on, Zelda. The world is threatened once again. Well, whose fault is that? Oh god, they're still after me. Actually, that's good because I wanted to get that horn. Oh, now you get to double up. Ooh! Oh. Great. Alright, good work, team. Nope, stop it. Put the bits down or so help me! <laughs> Alright, great. 
if you've ever seen Creature of the Black Lagoon or any other Universal classics. Um, if we're oh. talking about like monster classics, I've seen most of them. Uh, I watched the, the Wolfman. Fun time. Yeah, Wolfman's great. Um, Wolfman's weird. Um, yeah. I wonder what's like the official ah. list of Universal Monster. Phantom of the Opera, the OG. Does he count? The 1925 version. Oh. I have a quick Google search says so. Huh. Dracula, um, the Invisible Man, uh. Black Cat. The Incredible Shrinking Man, also very fun. That movie I had to watch for movie struck patrons fixed it as they want to be reviewed. I was surprised by how much I enjoyed parts of it. It's not like a perfect movie or anything, but it's got some really cool um, visual effects going on for an Just older movie. Really wedge it in there. Night of the Living Dead is always a classic. <laughs> I'll always go to bat for Nosferatu. It's a weird, weird movie. <laughs> <laughs> No Sparat. It's kind of fun to see a vampire just be like fully spooky. Like, there's nothing human about him, and it is extremely fun to see on screen. Yeah, making him just absolutely monstrous is a really smart way to do it. Like, he's just a weird guy, mm. a weird little guy. Mm -hmm. There's not a hint of suave Dracula in there to be found, and I think that that's. Oops. <laughs> I failed you. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. Well, I tried. <laughs> All right, best of luck with that, bud. We've got a prior engagement to keep. In hell. <laughs> oh, you, you like Woohoo! Oh, wait. Oh, good, that's just glue. Sometimes they have slightly unexpected lava pits. Oh, yeah, especially around um, Elden. Yeah, so as we were paragliding down, I was like, am I going to need to immediately leave to avoid being set on fire? <laughs> but no, we were fine. It's just the personified malice of the reincarnating guy that hates us. Much more manageable. So super chill. Like, really relaxing. Just the best. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Oh, yeah, a uh, uh, person in chat just reminded me, Last Voyage of the Demeter. Uh, I've been seeing trailers for it, and it looks trailers. really good. Because, um, like, that's the move, right? You do a horror movie set on the ghost ship that Dracula systematically wipes out. Yeah. I think it's a really cool concept. It's I think it's a way to play with the Dracula, like, like monster flick without falling into too many old tropes. I'm excited to see what it like, comes to be like. As soon as they showed um, me that shot of like the, the like the preteen cabin boy, I was like, oh no. <laughs> poor guy, poor little red shirt. I was like, maybe, maybe it'll be okay actually. Maybe maybe it won't go horribly wrong. Alright, let me just drop. I I'm, I wanna try something. Nope. Oh, yes! <laughs> I've done it! The stupidest weapon! So, okay, so I remember I ran into these uh, in like an, er an early part of my playthrough, and I couldn't figure out what they were. And then later, when I did the um, uh, Elden Volcano thing, I was like, oh, cool, the ability that those guys have uh, it makes sense. It, it looks like that thing that I found in the depths. We should go back and find it. And I could never find it again. And the reason is, this thing will turn into a boss arena after you've defeated that overworld boss. And this is just, like, its dormant oh, yeah. form. But I did, like, I did everything to these things. I, like, you can't ultra hand it. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. Well... Nothing to do but wait until the boss is beat. Yep. <laughs> Nothing to do but wait. All right, uh, let's see. Would you happen to have any tips for making audio editing more bearable? Best thing you can do to make your audio editing go smoother is to record better audio before you get into the program, and that's unfortunately just true advice. Um, yeah, the less you have to do, the easier it'll be. Yeah. There's no, like, one-size-fits-all solution <laughs> for audio. I like to make presets if I'm going to be editing the same person talking just to help, like, 
get stuff into a range where it's easier for me to adjust but yeah. generally like you kind of just got to fiddle around with it till you find a workflow that's smoothest for you um it's a very it can be a very finicky field you can get really into the weeds with it um if i had to give you one really solid piece of advice just make sure that you remember that less is more mm -hmm. um sometimes you just need to do a little compression or just a little eq and you don't need to get too into the weeds on adding a ton of effects on top of things because at a certain point you put too many effects on something it just becomes a little less listenable um so yeah <laughs> Unfortunately, the best advice is be better at recording audio yeah. first, and then it'll be easier when you're actually editing it. Just get good, bro. Yeah. Um, another question for either, if you'd like to answer, what kind of action movie protagonist would you be? Huh. Mm. That's a toughie, because, like, realistically, probably not great at it. <laughs> um... Yeah, I feel like I'd have to be in, like, a rush hour situation. Like, there's no world where I'm a very serious action hero. Mm. Although, I did fence for a few years, so I think, you know, maybe there could be an argument for a Three Musketeers type thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. that would be the most fun. I feel like... Would I want to be? Mission Impossible. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hang from things and hell? do little beep boops. Okay. I'm not even... Uh, it's... Ugh. I can't tell where the boundaries of this are. Hmm. And I don't know where the other light route is. It feels like there should be one. Maybe this is one of those things where there's another light route like on the other side of this wall. Actually, there for sure is because there's one under this thing. Oh, that reminds me. Let's go hmm? figure out. Oh my god, we need to go so far up. Uh, well, I, I really want whatever's in that, because it, it, we found it. It would be rude not to. Go get it. You got time. Go yeah. Hang. Uh, question from chat. What is your note-taking process for movie struck? Um, hmm. it's very stream of conscious. Usually what will happen is I'm watching the movie, and I will have a notes app open next to me, and I will type and watch and type and watch, and just anything that happens on screen, I write it down. Uh, for a lot of movies, that is the oh, no. beginning and end of the process. Um, if it's a short movie, that's all I'm doing for it. Uh, sometimes I have had very professional guests on, or have p they've picked a very long movies, and I, sometimes I will go through afterwards and try and condense notes, so combine lines that are describing the same event or something. But generally, um, the process is very stream of consciousness, which works for me because I am very ADHD, and I just need to be doing something with my hands to remember what's happening more so than anything else. Uh, this is how I took notes through all of college, was do things all at once while you're listening to something in real time, and then find them afterwards. It's not a great strategy, but it seems to have worked for me so far, so I <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> what are my thoughts on a weird The Al Yankovic story? Fantastic movie. Go watch it if you haven't already. I <laughs> loved it so much. I've watched it three times. <laughs> it's so... It's so good. Like... It doesn't have any business being as smart as it is, but it's like, of course, the Weird Al movie is itself a parody of like the music artist biopic. It it's does make a brilliant. lot of sense. <laughs> of course, it makes sense. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> Every time something happened, I'm like, oh my god, this movie is the smartest thing I've watched. All <laughs> <laughs> the Weird Al movie is so good. I can't recommend it enough. Go watch it. I think it's free on, like, Freebie or something right now. Or if it was, it, if it isn't, it was uh, a year ago when it came out. Mm. It is Daniel very Daniel Radcliffe fun. loves playing a weird dude these days, and I love that for him. Yeah, he's really doing good, which is surprisingly rare for extremely successful former child stars. Yeah. He's successful, and he's successful in a way that does feel like it's all on his own terms. Like, oh, yeah. He does... He feels like he's like, oh, I was in this major franchise, um, you know, feelings on it or whatever, but mm. I, I've made all the money I ever need to make in my life. What if I just did, like, projects that I was interested in? And that's how you get stuff like Guns Akimbo, you get Weird, the El Yankovic story, Swiss Army Man. He's just like, I'm game to play around, uh, just be a fun dude doing fun things that I'm genuinely interested in and can put all of my effort into. And I think that that's an extremely admirable attitude to have. Cool, we already found that. Huh. 
But yeah, absolutely. He's um He really seems to have a very like balanced perspective on his own life and career, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're both on rolling with difficulty. Any actual plays you would recommend while we're waiting for the next episode? Uh, yeah, I think we talked about this on the Q&A last year a little bit, but uh, I think both of us are kind of trying to avoid actual plays a little bit while we're <laughs> on it, just because we spend so much of the day playing the game for the actual play. And the uh, but some series that I liked a lot before we really started doing Rolls of Duke Difficulty. Um, uh, to mention 20 stuff is all great, especially on Sleeping City. Da yeah, Dungeons definitely. and Daddies is very funny. <laughs> very surprisingly heartwarming. Always a great show. I mean, it's cool. Yeah, oh my god. Um, yes, yes. Dance, <laughs> puppets, dance. <laughs> I'm going to get such primo loot from this. Yeah. Late to the Party is the podcast of a friend of mine. I thought it was very good. Go check it out <laughs> if you want. Um, but I feel like I have pretty basic tastes in actual plays. I, I try not to get too deep into too many niche ones, because similar to Movie Struck with why I don't listen to quite as many movie podcasts anymore, is that I don't want to inadvertently absorb someone's opinion on something and then parrot it out. Uh, mm. You know, it's... I just know myself a little bit. I'm like, oh yeah, like I think I can come up with my own original ideas. And also... <laughs> I, I would... Uh, like to avoid inadvertently absorbing something that's already been done. Um, Nadpod, though, also very good chat. Thank you for that one. Not another D&D podcast. Emily Axford is uh, the dream of playstyle. Is who I want to be in my life. So anything that she is in, top tier. I like how you pitted all those guys against each other. <laughs> yeah. Ooh! It's okay. We're good. Huh? Just slightly on fire. Nice. Any suggestions for a 9 to 5er who wants to try acting or other creative endeavors? Um, you can. I think the nice thing about a lot of creative endeavors is that you don't have to do it all at once and you can kind of do it in your own capacity. Like, sure, you could take an acting class if that's something you wanted to do, or you could just kind of Jesus, try monologues on your own. Pick out a, a monologue you really like or a script you really like and just spend some time at night practicing it. Uh, when, I, when I used to do tech theater, I was not auditioning for anything, but a lot of the times I'd be in the shower just like doing lines from the shows to myself just as like a thing to say. Uh, and it's a hey. fun time. Uh, I feel like with a lot of creative endeavors, it helps to get yourself a project of some kind to work on, even if you don't intend to do anything with that project. Mm. I mentioned this in the podcast, but I write and draw a comic in my free time because it gives me something to always be working on, even if I'm not feeling particularly creative. So if you're interested in getting into something creative, maybe give yourself a small project of some kind that you can just sort of work towards. It doesn't have to be something you plan on publishing or presenting. It could be something just for you, but it helps sometimes to have that structure to help make sure that you are practicing the creative muscles, even if you are not feeling especially inspired. Um, but yeah, I, I really encourage anyone who is interested in a creative endeavor to get into it because it's nice to have a hobby and also like express yourself in some way. Uh, I think it's a very healthy thing to go about. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to do things like that. Um, did I see either Barbie or Oppenheimer? I saw both. I did the Barbenheimer thing. Of course. I think Barbie exist. was more fun than Oppenheimer. I don't think that's a controversial thing. More fun than Oppenheimer? <laughs> what I did a Oppenheimer sentence. than Barbie. Um, Oppenheimer is very long, and I respect the art that went into making it, but I do not think it is for me. Uh, Barbie was a fantastic movie, and I was very happy that we watched that one second. Mm. The comic is just a project for me to force myself to draw when I am not feeling creatively inspired. It's not a published thing. I apologize. It has come up a couple times recently. It's, it's, it's always just, good it's just to a have project, something just a work that you process. just do for yourself. Uh, yeah. I think, like, uh, I'm one of those people who, for the most part, I get the most energy out of my art when I share it with other people. Um, I, I've talked about this before. I think that there's a tangible difference between, like, I must create this and I must share this. Uh, 
You can mm -hmm. have one without the other. A lot of people are motivated just because they like, they love creating things and that's just how it do. Ooh. Yeah. Heck yeah. I think for me too, like it is less about the quality of the comic or like the quality of the story I'm telling. Because I think there is a world where I could sit down and be like, I want to write or create something of quality that I'm going to publish. And I think that would force me to approach it in a very different way than I do this comic currently, because this is just an exercise for me more than anything else. It's less about like the finished product and more about the process of making it and like working those working those digital art muscles, working that like dialogue writing muscle and just kind of practicing the skills. Mm -hmm. And that's very entertaining for me. And yeah, it helps me in other ways. Like I write a lot of copy for my job. It's good that I've learned not to put dude in every every character's dialogue and every piece of copy. Um, but ultimately it is just like, yeah, this is just an idea that I kicked around when I was younger, used to doodle in the margins in high school. Now I work on it. It's nice to see it get completed. I feel happy that it's done, but it is just creatively fulfilling and not meant for like, I can't imagine showing it to another person because I'm like, there's just no way to explain like how much of this I've thought through. And also like what Whoops. this is to me is, is such a specific thing that scratches a very particular itch that like, I don't really feel the need to, sh it's like you're saying, like, I don't feel the need to share it necessarily. It is just creatively fulfilling. Sorry. Uh, I just found the flight range and it's playing Rivali's theme. Oh yeah. Aww. I don't think okay. I've ever, I don't think I, I came here. Him. Cause I didn't. Oh no. What's up, Canelli? Can you go looking? Safe and looking so well. Bro, my entire arm is like, it's fine. <laughs> I'm glad that he's not dead, because I just kind of assumed he was. <laughs> uh. Aww. I was so, yeah, worried that he was dead. It was like, thank god. Can I also I just... miss Rivali. He's my favorite champion. That okay? I was so sad. Uh. You have to do a little mini game. Well, Let's I can see. always use more arrows. All right, well, let me... Uh, let's just... No, hold on. We've got a worse bow we can get rid of. Good, good, all right. Smell you later, Grandpa. Quit ya! <laughs> oh, right! <laughs> oh, no, this is the funniest way that could have worked out. Uh, I guess we could also cook while we're here. All right, back we go! Yeah! Anyway, excuse me. <laughs> uh, Smell you later, old man. Any plans on playing Stray Gods myself after today's stream with Ludo History? I was already thinking of playing the game, so maybe. It seems fun. Yeah. I'm working my way through... Um, I got the Ace Attorney Chronicles like a year ago, and then I played through two-thirds of it, and I just started playing through the last third like yesterday. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think I'm going to try and finish that out before I buy a new game. But no, oh, it looks neat. I'm probably going to pick it up at some point. I might wait till it goes on sale. I feel like my attitude towards gaming is very casual. Yeah. Let's just do a little, little snackaroonies. Uh, question in chat. Do we like collaborative fiction? Like when people team up to all tell one story together? It's pretty yes. fun. Uh, um, I... <laughs> with the caveat that I don't like participating in it because I don't play well with others. <laughs> <laughs> I got no problem with it. I think I don't have a lot of exposure to it. I'm sure there's a lot of really cool stuff out there uh, involved. I have had to work and play well with others frequently in my life, and I think I am okay to passable at it. <laughs> it depends yeah. very much on the capacity in which I'm doing it. Um, I've been on a lot of creative teams where you have a very specific job, and then you are all working on the same project, and I think that's my ideal form of that, because it's like, okay, I know what my purview is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it is part of this team, so like, Oh, I'm the production designer, so I don't have to worry about like booking locations. I just have to decorate the set. I can handle that, you know. Right. Um, yeah. I guess you could. Chad is saying like, does D and D qualify as collaborative fiction? I think you could make that argument. Um, yeah, probably. It is a form of collaborative storytelling, uh, but I think it depends on your play style and what you're doing, like what your goals are. Because um, not every table is aiming to tell sprawling stories. Some of yeah. them are just there to min-max and punch some guys, which is completely valid. Uh, sometimes that is the way to go. Uh, so I don't know if I would blanket statement say that D&D &D is 
collaborative fiction, but I think it can, certainly can be, if it, depending on how you approach it. Yeah. Oh. Opinions on Critical Role. It's fun. I watched all of Campaign 1 and like half of Campaign 2 before I fell off the boat a little bit. Um, everyone on the show is incredibly talented, and <laughs> every time I see it, I'm like, oh my god, how did they not script that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know, there's just a lot of it, and with making our own show, I, I try not to, to watch too many other actual plays. I just kind of don't want to do more of the same when I have free time, but I think it is still a great show. If you enjoy it, that's great. Mm -hmm. All the love to the crew, despite our DM Austin's frequent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. He like... also liked the Critical Role cast. He just, uh I think it's, you know, when you get into the creative process of working on something that's similar to a, a fandom that you used to be in, you end up taking a very critical eye towards it just because you're trying to mm -hmm. tell the best story that you can. Um, yeah. And it can end up leading to this feeling that like, oh, like, we're just, you know, we're just shit talking, but it's like no, it's it's coming from a place of intellectual curiosity of like how can I make this work? Mm -hmm. um, how did they make this work? So anyway, I just think it's cool. All right, <laughs> as no, I'm I was saying, really cool. smell you later, old man. <laughs> <laughs> Reality. All right, bye. Adios. I know that there aren't many. Oh, hold on. There aren't many entrances to the depths in the Hebrew region, so I'm curious- No, endlessly frustrating that there are so few. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not entirely sure where we're gonna go to get- Because I know where one is, but I also know that it's isolated from everything else. So I'm just a little- I'm just a little not sure. Just a little uncertain. We hit 10k, you share a part of your comic. Uh, there's nothing, like, done. I, <laughs> I would feel bad making that a stream award because there truly is, like, not a page that is finished. This is kind of like... so in process. <laughs> whenever anyone's like, oh, I have a sketchbook, everyone's like, oh my gosh, I want to see... It's like, you don't. A sketchbook is where I put my bad shit. <laughs> sketchbook there's is so where I draw the things errors. for me. <laughs> I feel pride because I'm like, oh, I've, like roughed out and plotted almost like 180 pages of this because i do like 30 page chapters and i'm really far in but also the amount of that that is line arted and colored and not even shaded but just like at a point that i would consider it kind of finished maybe like five percent mm. <laughs> it's really nothing to look at it is the most sketchbooky of projects there are yeah some projects you make for you because it's fun yep. for you to create them mm -hmm. How are we going? Ooh, an updraft. Uh, yes, please. Could you at least tell us what it's about? The, the spark notes are group of rebels try to take down a evil king with a magical artifact. It's kind of the TLDR. <laughs> I think anything more than that would be promising more than I can deliver on in, <laughs> in a project for me. It's a pretty. St I didn't. I'm not getting fucked up. But again, it's really just like practice art. There's nothing too crazy going on. Um, nothing to the quality of Aurora, written by our very own Red. Hey, That's hey. Else on blast. <laughs> it's a great comic. You should all read it. Mm. It's available. It's on a website. You can go. It see does. It. <laughs> it does have the benefit of actually publicly existing. I suppose. Yeah. All right, little buddy. <laughs> Where are you gonna lead me? It better be to a cave that leads to the depths, or I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be tilted. I keep hoping for Caves to the Depths in Hebrew, and then keep not getting Caves to the Depths in Hebrew. We have Caves to the Depths at home. Yes, we all love Aurora in this house. Hey. Crash the website again. No, no! <laughs> I got one 503 error on the back end when I went to approve some comments, and I was like, Oh god, it's happening! <laughs> but, uh, but we're okay. All good. Oh, did I just accidentally... Oh, <laughs> oh is this the... that waterfall cave? This is the waterfall cave that's full of mushrooms. Hell yeah. I love that one. <laughs> we accidentally found it early. How pleasant. All right, give me whatever this is. And maybe someone in chat can tell me how I'm supposed to... Fucking blink. Okay, there we go. Someone in chat can tell me how I'm supposed to get to the depths from here. Ooh, that's good. Um, unfortunately, so are all of these. We can get rid of some of these sticks with arms on. 
it's cute that they say these are extra durable because the stick might be. The Bokoblin arm. That Ziggy coming through. She walked up to my microphone and screamed. Oh man, I'm sorry I missed it. <laughs> Chat, don't pull your link. He's not a shorty, shorty, short pants. He's just a guy. He's just a little guy. He's a short king. Have you read One Piece? I've only read like 20 chapters so far after hearing recent praise. Um, read, I believe you've seen and read none of One Piece to my understanding? Uh, I think I actually tried watching it a ways back. Um, mm. Obviously that was not the ideal way to experience it. No. Uh, what is that noise? I, I haven't had a serious anime phase since middle school, so last time I was current with One Piece was the Fishman Island arc, and I understand that it has gotten very far since then. About a year ago, I tried. I was like, oh, I only ever read it. Why don't I try and watch it? Uh, um, that is the incorrect still, way to do it. it's still, unfortunately, extremely fun is the thing. I made it all the way up to Eni's Lobby, which is my favorite arc, and I was like, oh, well, I'm seeing the stuff I like the most, so maybe I'll just take a break after this, and then I never got back to it. So mm. I'm very behind, but I do like the series, and I appreciate its consistency. Like... It's, for as long as it is, it is an incredibly regular series. Like, <laughs> like you always know exactly what you're going to get from it. And if you go into it and you want that, you're never going to be disappointed. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's a good time. Nope. I think it's pretty fun. Uh, free time skip is relatively light on anime non compared to post time skip. But even so, like, there's still a lot to really like about it. Mm. Um, I don't know. I have a good time with it. I love Zoro. Yeah. No boy. I don't know if it'll ever end in my lifetime. <laughs> I really hope that the One Piece is like a real cool thing. Because I know that I the author has said that it is. I think it'd be so funny. But that's the thing, like, everyone was like, is the One Piece going to be the friends they made along the way? And the writer was like, no. But like, the writer would have to say that even if it were the friends they made along the way. Like, yeah. right? <laughs> I just can't imagine what it could be that would justify like over 20 years straight of misadventure. <laughs> <laughs> Like, is there anything that would actually be satisfying? No, I almost feel like it has to be the power of friendship. Like, there's just nothing else that's, like, equivalent. It might be a shaggy dog story. Like, they get there and then it, like, oh, hello, sir. No, ah. fuck off, come back. Perish. Thanks, buddy. Doesn't seem like there's a shrine down one here. One Piece does have one of my all-time favorite jokes in any anime series in it. Um, pretty early on, they're on an island full of dinosaurs, and the guy who uses three swords Zoro, Zoro. Up, is like staring down an unseen enemy. And uh, he's like, so I see you use the three sword style as well. And then he uh, reverse shots, and he's looking at a Triceratops. <laughs> yes. And I think that's one of the funniest jokes ever put to screen. Like, oh, <laughs> nothing God. will ever top that for me. <laughs> it's just, that's just funny. It's <laughs> that's just, just a, that's just a damn good joke. Everyone is completely in character in that moment, and it's incredibly, incredibly uh, funny. <laughs> My dumbest weapon yet. That You're so doing your best. <laughs> sword sword is completely valid. What are you talking about? <laughs> sword sword is my finest weapon. Sword sword is only the finest of gear. <laughs> a, a, a delicate weapon from a more civilized age. How the fuck am I supposed to get to the depth from here? I think what gets me about One Piece is how genuinely funny it is at times. Because sometimes I feel like comedy anime just kind of loses me a little bit. Mm. But One Piece stays pretty consistent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that lines up with what I've heard. That like, it, it's is, it's definitely one of those one of those anime that really really suffers from the conversion from manga to anime just in terms mm -hmm. of the pacing because like yeah at some point you need to actually take into account the practical limitations of your average human lifespan <laughs> when it comes to storytelling <laughs> like yeah that's it look we all talk about like oh we're doing it for the art but it's like yeah but at some point you have to think about how the fuck people work sometimes you know it's just mm. a thing and like the, 
the pacing of a comic page is really this is something i've been thinking about for a while now um because comics have this very unique relationship with time and correspondingly with sound because like you you put text in a speech bubble on a comic page and if you think about it you're like this speech would take X amount of time to say, give or take a few seconds, depending on how fast this person talks. So logically, that is the amount of time that this panel is taking. And that's just very much not true. <laughs> um, you can have a single panel of a character saying a single syllable or word, and it can feel like this timeless moment just hanging in space. Uh, yeah. And you can have a panel that looks like it should take a few seconds because it's like a character is falling, but they're saying a fucking, like, Declaration of Independence recitation, and you're not sure how long it's supposed to take. But you don't really think about that too hard when you're, like, reading mm -hmm. it. So, like, the one time I tried watching any JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I got to the part where uh, Dio and the Joj are fighting the first time, and they're, like, falling through a three-story burning building for, like, ten fucking minutes because they both have a novel to write in the middle. It's just, it's, it's buck wild and it doesn't make any sense. And it's not a problem in the, in the medium of comics because the pace of comics is influenced by the writer and the layout of the panel, like the page, mm -hmm. but determined by the reader. The writer cannot yeah. stop the reader from just skimming their eyes over the page basically as fast as they can read the words in the dialogue. Uh, you know, the writer doesn't have the power to stop them from doing that. But like... That's, that's just how the medium works. But then if you introduce the uh, sound element, like when they do live dubs of comics and stuff like that, or when you make an anime out of it, um, mm -hmm. you end up in the awkward situation that suddenly you are introducing linear time to a medium that never had it before. And the fact that it didn't have it was invisibly spackling over a lot of holes. So, you know, a single, like, 30-page issue of a comic, you might be able to read that in, like, 10, 15 minutes, and it's, it's fun and exciting. Uh... Me? Oh, I see what's happening here. Uh, yeah. I think. Do you feel and like there isn't a convenient hole to the Underdark in this particular re region? Uh, I think you may need to go a little south. I'm gonna freaking lose it! Do I need to stick a rock on this thing? Ugh! Why is everything hard? Why must Hylia test me like this? Yeah. All right. As much as I do think it's better yeah, to there. read One Piece than watch it generally, for the exact pacing reason you discussed, there are occasionally episodes where I'm like, nah, you gotta watch that. It just, it's just cool. Like, <laughs> mm. unfortunately, this is a good 20 minutes of TV, and you gotta just turn it on. Um, to do the, there's the famous walk scene uh, very early on when they're in the East Blue, where all the, the team comes together. They're like, no, we gotta defend our friend. We're gonna do a very dramatic walk. And it just is, it's, it's much cooler in the anime than it is <laughs> reading it. Right. Um, but generally, like, that's the thing where I'm like, well, you could look up a guide of, like, what are the coolest episodes? And then just read your way to those, and it's the only way to really consume it in any sort of human lifespan. Oh my god, we hit 4K, and I haven't even thought of what we were going to do for 2K. Ah, ah you guys are too good at this. Thank you guys so much to everyone who's been donating. Um, yeah. Like, all these donations are getting matched by the charity, uh, so uh, we are just really honored that you guys would continue to support um, the wildfire relief, it's going to be incredibly helpful to the people who have been directly affected, which is pretty much the entire island of Maui yeah. at this point. So, yeah. um, really, really thank you to everyone who's been able to contribute, um, and to everyone who's tuned in. Yes. Sorry. Brain doing a lot of things right now. <laughs> yeah. All good. Take your time. Okay. But yes, uh, everything I've heard about One Piece, the manga, is that it is incredibly good. Still really long. I don't really want to burn an entire week getting for that backlog. I respect that it's yeah, extremely that's cool. Yeah, fair. Um, I would never ask someone to read or watch it, you know? Like, I'm right. Like, oh, I'm like, every once in a while, I'll tune back in and, like, catch up a little bit. But I'm like, there's no world where I ever look at another human being and say, you know what you should spend the next, like, month of your life doing? <laughs> mm hmm I just, I understand where myself and others stand in relation to this. Oh, please tell me that was the right move. Oh, hey. Ludo Oyster is in the chat. No, the treasure chest. No! What up? Yellow? Hello. 
No. Okay, we did it. Good work, team. Oh, okay. Sure, yeah, I'll take that. Okay, goodbye, Swallowbow. <sighs> Everything's good. I feel like with mm -hmm. anime these days, I really have such like a low... Like, I like to consume such a variety of things that I feel like I can only ever do one anime series at a time anymore. And even that is, like, really depends on the week. Mm. I want to be a well-rounded consumer of media, but man, I had a strong phase in middle school and I think I have been recovering from that ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anime just kind of be like that. I think there's no better anime than whatever you watch when you were 14. Yeah. Like, unfortunately, like, of course Yu-Gi-Oh! still rocks. I watched that when I was 10. It was prime Yu-Gi-Oh! age. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, like, the last time I tried watching Yu-Gi-Oh! subbed, kind of does legitimately slap in many, many places. <laughs> I think there is a certain nostalgia to the type of anime that it is where it's like, oh, this is just like pure card games. Like they are out here power of friendshiping their way through this TCG game. I <laughs> I can't take that from them. No, of course um, not. Uh I was a huge fan of uh Yona of the Dawn, which is probably <laughs> the best shoujo in existence. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It gets slept on too frequently. They did that thing they love to do, the shoujo shows, where they only gave it one season of the anime and it deserves so many more. Of course. Um, and Hitman Reborn was a big one for me for a while. I could not tell you the plot of that show, but I remember it being my absolute favorite thing. <laughs> I was so into it, and I could tell you no salient details about it. I've heard, I've heard a lot of people talking about it. I feel like that was... That might have been on the cusp when I was out of high school or something and like it was around the big three era but it wasn't like as popular as them like it was kind of one of those like middle tier ones that would sometimes show up in like a shonen jump issue but never like peaked beyond you know right yeah that was the vibe I got and I think I checked it out briefly and I was like I don't really get the gimmick and then I just kind of tapped out immediately um yeah it starts as like a comedy and then it very quickly becomes just like a battle anime and i think it actually gets better when it becomes a battle one but it's oh yeah. that's rare i remember yeah i remember really liking it and honestly i think it's just that it was like <laughs> it's the mafia is was kind of the whole start and end of that for me mm. there's one guy who fights by throwing tiny dynamite that one i do remember and i thought that was very funny he just has a handful of little tnt sticks and i think that that's incredibly charming <laughs> that sounds familiar <laughs> i don't know why but Yona of the Dawn, legitimately fantastic. Somehow, like... Somehow, like, a reverse harem thing, and it's not weird even a little bit. Like, it's just huh. purely these people all care for each other deeply. And Aww. also, the main female character is, like, powerful in her own right. Like, she finds, like, an inner strength as she is ousted from her throne and, <gasps> like, goes to help the people of her country but never loses her core kindness and also is an archer. Um, really incredibly cool. Very uh, Sango from Inuyasha. Like, oh, if I had to yeah. give her an equivalent character. Yeah, I think she's super cool. Um, Honestly, one of my favorite fonts of character. Yeah. Thank you to Anonymous for the $500 donation. That's oh, incredibly shit. kind of you. Which also puts us over 5K. Oh, my God. So okay. Chat, you have to tell me how to get to the depths from here. Hands, Please. hands, hands, hands. <laughs> <laughs> Look. The next time we find a Great Leviathan skeleton and there are Phantom Ganon hands, I promise I will, uh, I guess I'm, let them turn into Phantom Ganon? I'm pretty sure you gotta, like, go more south to get underground, dude. Mm. Like, I don't think there's anywhere in these mountains that you're gonna be able to get underground from. Alright. Chat's gotta tell me the approximate location of the Depths Chasm I need. Well, you know what? Let's just, um... Gonna... Uh, Ludo History is saying the only adept's entrance is near Rito Village. Well, I know that one, but it's isolated. It's It's got walls on all sides, so I can't use that to get to the rest of... Um... Alright, we're just gonna go here, and then we're gonna launch ourselves into space. Then we're gonna look at Hyrule Ridge Chasm west of Ridge Skyview Tower. Okay, it's a good sign. I don't have any Skyview Towers, but... Did I watch as a middle schooler? I mean, like, the big three... I was a big bleach kid. Ah, uh, yeah. I was also, of those big three, a big bleach kid. Yeah. 
big bleach kid, and then One Piece as I became more refined. Of course. So it was just like an incidental side effect. I think Naruto's the one I probably watched the least. Yeah. I got like 12 episodes into it and just did not get it. I would like one or two characters and then they wouldn't appear for like 10 chapters and like, nah, I don't care anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Labyrinths in the Tundra would be the next closest one, Ludo History saying. Mount Labyrinth? Rome would also work. Oh, for entrances to the, the chasms and whatnot. Hmm. Fruits Basket, also an excellent shoujo. That's kind of like the one to watch. Uh, I think I like Yona of the Dawn a little better, but I think I also went towards that kind of storytelling anyway. Um, fairy Tale was a big one, I oh, think, for both yeah. of us. Yeah, fairy tale was exactly my shit for like those those yeah. formative early high school years. Such um, a good battle theme. <laughs> when the bagpipe hits. Oh incredible. man, straight up slaps. And, and I like how they have like the triumphant version of the main theme and then the sad version yeah. of the main theme. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Um. Oh, Soul Eater, that was a big one for me. Yeah, I feel like I watched all that and I didn't really get it. I couldn't tell you a single salient detail about it, but I remember being super into it. Like, if you asked me for a, a plot instance in that show, I got nothing. But I remember thinking it was really cool. I think I like the- I think I like Soul's headband a lot. Yeah. I was convinced that Soul was voiced by Johnny Young Bosch, and then he wasn't. It was some other guy. <laughs> he sounded exactly like Johnny Young Bosch, but a little bit deeper. Soul Eater and Fairy Tale now have the problem of, like, way too much anime sense for me to ever go back and try and rewatch them. But, like, at the time, prime. Mm-hmm. All right, chat is going to need to help me out with a depth's chasm somewhere fucking around here. Where are you on the map? Uh, by the Lucky Clover Gazette. Runakit Shrine is right near the chasm. Are you at Runakit Shrine? No, but I, this one is. Mm. They're saying it crossed the canyon. Hmm. Well, that's the opposite direction of where I just went. Fill up your map, Christ. No, because we're going to be doing that on the big stream. Ah, oh, found a chasm. Yes, this is. we are streaming Tears of the Kingdom right now, but later in August, we're going to be doing a very long charity stream with a bunch of cool guests, and we're going to be playing Tears of the Kingdom, and there are specific things that we're not doing now because we're going to be doing them in that stream, like filling in the map. Yep. So. It's going to be uh, an all please. towers, all geoglyphs run. Yeah, we're going to get all the story, which means we're pandering to me specifically. <laughs> um, but yes, please uh, forgive us for not having anything filled in now. We're just doing grocery shopping, basically. Yep. We're spelunking for pants. Read the title. <laughs> Sometimes I'll see a character from an anime that I'm like, I didn't re know that I remember this guy. Like, I, I don't understand why that hair is eliciting such an immediate understanding in me. <laughs> but also, I guess I watched more of this in middle school than I thought I did. That's often how it goes. Like, I watched all of Code Geass, and I don't remember any of it. <laughs> That's a Blue Exorcist for me. I remember thinking that was the coolest show. I, I also watched Blue all Exorcist. of Blue Exorcist, and, and I couldn't tell. Like, I'm like, okay, they're both the sons of the devil. And one of them is more demon than the other, and that's all I got. That's like the full start and stop of my understanding of that series now. And I remember thinking, and like, I still think the theme song to that, one of the best openings ever. When the saxophone riff hits, oh, unmatched. Man. But man, yeah, I couldn't tell you the plot of Blue Exorcist. I think that was, that was one of my first experiences with an anime that had like a very disappointing anime only ending. That, like, mm, yeah. up to that point, it had been fairly consistent in quality, and then it just stopped being good. And I was mm -hmm. like, huh, interesting. I think I only, like, I think I watched an episode or two, but mostly read Blue Exorcist, which probably was a good choice. That I was indeed. The art style was very cool. Um, nope. Yeah, I have one issue of Shonen Jump on my bookshelf that I've saved from childhood as sort of a memento, and it is the one with the Blue Exorcist cover. It is just uh, written for Blue Exorcist on it, and I'm like, yeah, pretty. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, man. I 
think I had a very different. Oh, please. Well, I was just gonna say I had a very different viewing experience for anime before I started like dissecting writing for a living. Mm -hmm. Like, I I so recently I've been watching the uh, series the the yeah. YouTube channel Mother's Basement. Um, oh, ooh, where's this going? This feels like a dumb idea. Uh, who does a lot of like um, just anime analysis videos and like discusses seasonal anime of various kinds and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. Um, and it's it's giving me an awareness of things like, oh, everyone knows that the finale to this show was hot garbage. And I'm like, ah, yes, everybody knows. I didn't think about it that much at the time, but I mean, it wasn't good. <laughs> I think I just moved on at the time. Um, and the thing is, this, this school of analysis is really fun for me. It's just not something that I, it's something I need to like go back and remember to like switch on in my brain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I do like revisiting a series I loved as a child every once in a while. Um, I think I mentioned this on a podcast recently, but like, I my all time, ten year old Sophia's favorite show. I went as one of them for Halloween, The Winx Club. I love that. I love those funky fairies. I thought that show was the best thing ever written. I think I cried when one of them almost died. Well, yeah. Um, and then I watched the first three seasons in yeah. the four kids dub, because uh, that's how I watched it as a kid, like a year ago when I just had a night where I was working on like a Ren Fair costume or something, and it's smoking hot garbage but it's also <laughs> so nostalgic for me and i'm like oh i can appreciate why i like this so much as a kid while also understanding that like man that writing is oof yeah <laughs> yeah maybe this is not as dramatic a show as i first thought it was that I that is how it be sometimes it doesn't mean i love it any less it was still very important to me as a 10 year old but mm. yeah it's just uh it's not like super rewatchable in the way that some cartoons from childhood are but I still love it. Yeah. And that's growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky me, though, when I revisited Reboot, it only got better because I understood all the references in it. <laughs> I just love the Wings Club. I like their little transformations. Yeah. I found out much later in life that it was an Italian magical girl show, which I think was also true of Witch, which is also very good. Wait, also I thought, had, I both Witch of them had French. banging theme songs. Maybe not, is Witch though. French or is it... I think Actually, you know what? I think there's a lot might... of French ones also. Well, I think I might have been confusing it with Miraculous Ladybug. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Miraculous Ladybug. And there was like another one where they were singers, I think, was both French. Um, yeah, Witch was Italian. Um, Witch is another one where the Wink comic Club. is worlds better than the show. Just because yeah. the comic visuals are beautiful and the show just was doing the best with the budget they had. Very different experience. Yeah. Also, there are a lot of times where, like, you read the comic and you're like, I can imagine these guys sounding however I want. And then you watch a show version mm -hmm. and you're like, well, it's mediocre this early is... 2000s anime <laughs> dubbing. So this like, it's my biggest beef with the Winx Club because they got picked up by Nick after four kids. I watched the four kids dub as a kid, which say what you will about four kids, but the dub of the Winx Club and what the voices were all very distinct. And when they got picked up by Nick, they recast them all and they all sound exactly the same. And I remember being so mad. I, like, will... I never watched past season three because I was like, no, that dub, that dub is not good. I mean, I will defend the quality of like the four kids voice actors. Like the script they were mm -hmm. given was usually a mess, but like they were all like good at anime dubs before anyone else was. Um, I've talked about how like Dan Green and um, the voice actor for Joey Wheeler, whose name escapes me, uh, were both in Slayers, and they were, like, acting absolutely everyone around them under the table, uh, just effortlessly, seemingly. They were good at it before anybody else had figured out how it was supposed to work. Yeah, I mean, like, the infamous One Piece for Kids dub is something, <laughs> but I, I don't, I hesitate, you know, that's not the fault of there's I think that that is just that localization be happening sometimes. Yep. Um, I, yeah, we didn't have cable for a while when I was growing up, so, like, the only option was, uh, watch four kids on the weekends, and then, like, PBS during the week, and mm -hmm. I think that that was actually great for me as a kid, because it gave me one day a week where I would just be like, mm, today is cartoon day, and that is something I remember very fondly. Uh, I also knew that if you're watching four kids, Winx Club was the last show that played in the lineup, so oh. child Sophia understood... Well, I know that the last thing they're going to play is the Winx Club. 
So if I just start watching very early and keep watching until the end, I will get to see the Winx Club. Yeah. <laughs> so I would watch literally anything that was on for kids before their like prime programming at like 10 a.m., 11 a.m., right? Damn. Um, which was, there was a lineup. Very early, they play one or two episodes of miscellaneous shows that they were trying to demo, like your fighting food ons and you're like Dino King and stuff that like never got more than one or two seasons and seemed right. to like never quite be picked up. Um, then they would do like an hour of Yu-Gi-Oh! Of like, course. Or of TMNT. The 2003 version is the best version and I will die on that hill. Oh, yeah. um, and then <laughs> they do Sonic X. Um, and somewhere in there, sometimes they throw in a second Yu-Gi-Oh! episode, but it would be like uh, GX or 5Ds for some reason. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> those ones are in a weird position because I think like at least one of them never got a complete dub. Or something like uh -huh. that, like, cause four kids kind of imploded in a weird way. Yeah, it just sort of like died. Yeah, and I think a lot of their projects were left unfinished, and I feel like one of the Yu-Gi-Ohs was in that boat, but I don't remember which one. Yeah, I want to say Five Ds, but honestly, don't quote me on that one. Mm. Um, I never, I like, I got the original series down pretty well, and everything beyond that is kind of just like, I don't know, maybe I saw an episode here or there. Um, but I remember like all of it was like good. But man, it was all just in service of getting young Indigo to the Winx Club. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would sit through any amount of Yu-Gi-Oh! and Sonic X if it meant at the end of it I got to watch one 20-minute episode of the Winx Club. <laughs> and they never played more than one episode, which used to drive me crazy. They played like three Yu-Gi-Oh! episodes in the night, or in the morning, and then like two TMNT. Which granted, TMNT was great, but like still. Give me more! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give the people what they want, you clearly understand. <laughs> All right, we just stole the Sega Clan guy's ride. Nice. No, 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 no. Uh, yes. not nice. Not nice. Karma. No, no, we're good. Also, a lot of Power Rangers and other shows. This was just my my core memory of the four kids lineup. <laughs> What Winx uh, and Pixie was my favorite of the show? Amazing question. Um, I loved, I went as Flora for Halloween one year, but I think Musa was actually my favorite. I think my mom just liked that Flora's costume had the most skin covered of anyone. Oh uh, yeah. Spirit Halloween. Um, Pixies? Hmm. I could go either way on this. I feel like I was pretty neutral on the Pixies as a kid. They were sort of just more characters. <laughs> But definitely Musa, and with an honorable mention to Tecna for favorite fairy. I like that they. I like that Musa got to wear really baggy pants. <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought that, and I liked their. I liked their ponytails. I thought they were neat. Jackie Chan Adventures was also, I think, on Four Kids very briefly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, we're right behind. At mine. some point, when I was in like, uh, when I was a kid, we did gain access to like Jet X, and that was really big for us because that was all the Power Rangers and. Uh, like a bunch of like a bunch of those like Disney 2 cartoons you know like the second tier it's like they're not on the main channel so we're putting them on Gen X <gasps> whoa we got hold on uh, did you get pants? We got, well I wouldn't call these pants <laughs> <laughs> they're trousers it says trousers that that's pants. barely more than the underwear look it's actually less covering than our boxer shorts all right, cool. We're gonna go back to... All right, well, this is a disgusting combination, but it's functional and that's all we need today. <laughs> it'll it'll qualify, it checks the box. Yeah. I said we were coming to the depths in search of pants. I never said yeah. what size. All right. <laughs> well, let's just uh, let's do a little... It's nice that they glow, at least. The ones you have on. Mm. Huh. I wonder if we can get back that Yiga plane that we totally crashed. Probably not. Uh, eh. If they didn't want it to be stolen, they wouldn't have left it unattended and not complained when I grabbed it game is built in a very specific way where it's almost encouraging you to do crime and I do appreciate that. <laughs> but only on the Yiga guys and the Koroks. Yeah. 
And I guess if you wanted to get really funky with the chickens, you could too. But... <laughs> what I really like about the Koroks is that they are A, invisible, so nobody knows your crimes, and B, pretty much indestructible, so you can't actually do yeah. anything too bad to them. You can just sort of let out your anger a bit. They will react the same to being lightly nudged as to being set on fire. And that's just beautiful. Mm. We need to figure out something to do as a tier reward. Hands, 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 I, hands, I, look, hands. yes, okay, but it's I don't- It's what the chat wanted, back at 2k. I don't mind that on principle. I am okay with the concept of doing a hands fight. I just need you guys to tell me where I can find one. Well, we know one's at that Hebrew, or at the um, Gerudo skeleton. Ugh, but I didn't get a light route too near that. I'd have to run, or maybe get another skeleton. There's also horse. some, um, if you go to Akala, Akala at the top of the Citadel ruins, there's the, um, there's one there. That's pretty far from anywhere we've managed to get to so far. It's not impossible, but uh, it's a long way to the go. In the Korok forest? That's even harder to get to. <laughs> Mm, Elden Skeleton. Okay, if you guys can point out where the Elden Skeleton is on here, I'm happy to go there, because I want to get that armor set. Um, I know it's like... Eh. Is that where the actual caldera is? I think it is? might be further back. Like, further north or further west? North. Because, like, isn't it pretty... Well, actually... Hmm. I know there's the one, one on Mechon. Sort of like in that back ridge. If you find the one above ground, then the one underground is oh, below it, right? The Elden one we might not be able to get to until we get the fireproof armor. Oh, yeah. Oh, Unless you have fireproof elixirs. Mm. I do not. But I actually did just remember. We'll go get our ass beat on Mechar Island uh, once I reach whatever this thing is. Sound nice. good, guys? Great. Oh, God. Floor's lava. Floor's lava, floor's lava, floor's lava, floor's lava! Ow! Okay, we're good. Uh, the things I get accustomed to in my 58% complete playthrough. Ah, the good days. Calling it 100% is disingenuous. I'm not finding all those fucking Koroks. Noir, one of our castmates on Rolling with Difficulty, did that. Yes. In like a week of the game being out. I was like, what's wrong with you? His power frightens me. <laughs> the man is incredibly dedicated. I can't take that from him. Of course not. But would I do that? No, not even a little bit. <laughs> no, it's much more normal to uh, play through all the Fire Emblem multiple times to see all the dialogues in person. It checks off little boxes. It, there's so many fewer dialogue options than there are Koroks in this game. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Although... Given that I do have to play through the entire game and see a single S support, I don't know if it actually takes less time. I think it just means I have to click through more dialogue options. Do I have to climb up an entire mountain? I was not even done with three houses and then Engage came out and I was like, oh god. And Engage was not as fun as three houses for me. It's a good mm -hmm. game, but I like the three houses story better. Uh, I've played every Fire Emblem game. <laughs> Chat, for those of you asking. They are my favorite, probably my favorite game series, other than like maybe Pokemon, just holding over from childhood. Mm. Um, Red's very familiar with this, but I need desperately to see every dialogue option possible. So whenever a new game comes out, I do my best to see every possible dialogue option. And especially in older games, you could only get up to five support levels with any given unit. So you couldn't like get everyone's C through A supports in a single run through. You had to just keep replaying until you got all of them. Like. I had charts as a kid of like, how can I see every dialogue option in this game? Uh, in the newer games, you can get almost all of the supports in a single run, except for the S supports. I do include those in the list. Mm -hmm. Lunatic mood mode, Ludo, very fun on Fire Emblem 8. Um, I keep meaning to go back to Engage, which is the newest one that came out, because I do really like it and I played through it once or twice. Um, and I think like the combat gameplay in particular is like especially upgraded, but I just couldn't get myself invested in the story. It's like pretty, 
pretty like basic kind of story, which is not a bad thing necessarily. It does exactly what it needs to do. But uh, as someone who lives and dies for the dialogue options in these games, I didn't find the support as engaging as I did for like three houses. This um, is so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm done tanking damage for stupid reasons. Now I'll be tanking damage for smart reasons, like going to pick a fight with something on Mechar Island where nothing bad ever happens. <laughs> How far is this fucking cliff? Ah! It's fine. At least this one has less hurdy floor. <laughs> this is a scientific term. Yeah, that would be too easy. Of course. Why? I do run into the problem with Fire Emblem games where I always have like one or two characters and like these ones are my favorite and then I have to do runs in order to see dialogue where I don't recruit them or they're my enemies and I get incredibly sad when I'm doing that run and then I don't want to do it anymore. Um, yeah. Anytime I couldn't have Claude in three houses I was like no! <laughs> Give me back my boy! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, or if Seth died in uh, Sacred Stones I would just fully restart the game at that point I'm like I can't do this. I need my boy. I need my comfort redhead <laughs> i feel like for like medical reasons you should not try to play Baldur's gate 3 right now like i do worry about that uh <laughs> i think maybe i would disappear into the ether but also like i don't have the capability to play it on my current systems like i would have to i have a desktop mac that i edit on and i try to keep that thing as pristine as possible like there is nothing on saved on that bad boy that is not directly related to a video or podcast that i'm editing at any given time um Tempting to put Baldur's Gate on. <laughs> mm -hmm. How fucking high up do I have to go to get to this fucking thing? Where is it? I know it's hard to lose Seth in Sacred Stones because he's basically the tankiest unit to ever exist. But sometimes when I'd be doing a run specifically to get dialogue between units that weren't Seth and someone else. I would just not use him, and eventually he'd get underleveled, and then I would be like, oh, I'll put Seth in this one. And he would be like, oh my god, I can't <laughs> believe I did it. I lost my boy. No, my boy. Father, help. <laughs> Father. Oh I think god. Sacred Stones is an often slept on Fire Emblem game. I think it's a really, it's a really fun entry into the series. It stands alone really well, and for being a GBA game, it's incredibly smooth to play. Um, Pretty ride or die. That was probably one of my favorite games as a kid, so I think maybe I'm a little bit biased, but even so. Mm -hmm. Really solid cast, fun enough story. I'm a, I have a good time with it. I think oh, more modern no. Fire Emblem fans should go back and play a ROM or something. I was trying to figure uh -huh. out how the hell we could have a, a chasm like this, or, or like, a, like a mountain this high, because I was like, this is the Hebra region. The fucking mm -hmm. mountain is the like biggest thing. I think we're climbing up the wall of the chasm. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah. Well, on the plus side, there's only so much mountains, so we'll run out eventually. <laughs> yeah. I do agree, chat. Sacred Stone's probably, I think, the best entry into old school Fire Emblem, although you were also right that the GameCube and Wii entries do not get enough love. Uh, that Path of Radiance, Radiant Dawn, the Ike games, as it were. Yay! <laughs> For Red's boy. My boy. Um, super fun. Honestly, it's a good thing we have the glowy pants, or this would be way more unmanageable. <laughs> okay. I cannot remember anything about whatever armor set we're about to get. All I know is it cannot possibly be worth all this. <laughs> if you play in Sacred Stones, you have two routes you can play through. It's Ephraim and Erica, which are the two nobles. Uh, I believe in Erica's supremacy. <laughs> I wanted to play the girl character, but Ephraim, everyone's cool too, I guess. He's fine, he uses a spear and stuff. Why are we up near the ceiling? This game is stupid. I'm 
I don't. I hate to say it, but I do think maybe you might be what approaching the part where the ceiling starts to curve up and you can no longer climb higher. <laughs> well, why would the game be like that, huh? Why would they do that to me personally? <laughs> All right, well, that doesn't prove anything. <laughs> link, link, link. Okay, good. Got that friction. Yeah. Mm, don't like that. Or that. Ugh. No, 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 no. There we go. So what are you trying to do right now, exactly? I want to get the thing that we got the map for! It's marked in blue! Oh, great. Okay. So, okay. So you see? Maybe if you go see this around. thingy? See how fucking close we are? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> oh, boy. Cool. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Look, guys, it's Ooh. fine. We're fine. It was a learning experience. Ooh. I think that's lava. You're doing your best. Yeah. All's well that ends well. You'll find some pants. We'll all be satisfied. <laughs> Including Ziggs, who I just heard. Uh, she's on the other side of the room. I cannot believe the mic is picking that up. What, Ziggs? Come hang. You'll be part of the move. Allow me to descend into the abyss. She has just this thing where she sits staring up next to my chair and then she'll no, 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 like no, no, anywhere no. from 10 seconds to a full minute. Wait, hold on. Before I climb this. I knew it! You slime! <laughs> what up, Zig? Come here. Yeah. <laughs> you think to mislead me so easily. I've wised your games now. Huh. Child's play. Well, she seems to not be interested in jumping up. Tragic. You yeah. better be the greatest pants. <laughs> what if it's a shirt? What are you gonna do? I'll live if it's a shirt. What if it's a hat? I wouldn't be as fond of a hat. <laughs> Fine. I guess I can keep climbing. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Hold on. We'll just go up more. It's fine. Come on. Come on, you fuckers. Give me the uppies. Okay! <laughs> Good. I'll take it. Where in the good goddamn? Okay, I see. I see. Okay, okay, okay. This is cool. Hmm? It's fine. It's great. I'm not mad. Why would I? Who who would be mad? Who possibly could find themselves aggravated by these turns of events? Not I, for sure. Level-headed <laughs> bastion of patience that I am. As a bad boy, I would be. Uh... A little annoyed, but I'm not the one playing the game. Yes, cares. of course. That's the real bad boy attitude. I embody the the very spirit of professionalism, of gamer skills, as the kids say. <laughs> We're getting good, as it were. Yes. Oh goody! There's lava where I want to be next. Mm. But that's fine. After all, who could be displeased? By such a turn of circumstance. Uh. Surely, Anyone is this can't... not simply a learning experience to broaden one's horizons, meet new people, experience all the wonder and glory that this world has to offer us? I'm not butthurt? That would be silly. Everything's cool. I'm not gonna catch fire. I'm better than that. 
Everything's gonna be yeah. just fine. Are we gonna be going with fantasy rules of convection where we're fine if we don't lick the lava? I think we might be. I think there's a certain radius in which you get close to it and you're okay. Yeah. Might be able to get the thing and get out pretty quickly. Maybe. If we're so careful. I have a surplus of hearts because I definitely didn't keep running through the hurdy floors and yelling. Ah! Okay, well. Okay. There's the radius. Okay. Have you considered catching some fireproof lizards? Okay. Okay. Plan B. <laughs> it's okay. I have an idea. All's well. <clears throat> Did that? Nope. I need to throw it at myself somehow. Eh. Yeah. That's. Yep. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. Okay. Is this working? I can't tell if I- I think I am damp! I have acquired dampness! Nice. Great. Now where the fuck? Let me up, let me up, let me up! Time is of the essence! <laughs> okay! <laughs> it's a hat! Uh, Let's get the fuck that? out of here! <laughs> Wait, hold on. Is there a light route around here that I could have? I would really appreciate a light route. Actually, hold on. We were just here. Ah. Okay, there's like a light route like over here. Yeah, that would be a good idea to get. Just to have as a treat. Why not? A special After something. All, why shouldn't I have it? <laughs> I watched the Rankin and Bass Hobbit recently. Me and my boyfriend were looking for like a chill movie. And we were trying to find the uh, animated Lord of the Rings. Um, like Return of the King and whatnot, yeah. and hmm. they were not available on any streaming service. That we I don't had, think but... they made the animated Return of the King, did they? Or not the um, or Fellowship or whatever. They got two out of three, and one of them kind of got combined weirdly, right? Because it was like a they didn't quite finish the trilogy thing. Yeah. But we were looking for one of those, and we found instead. We were oh, like, well, gosh. I guess we'll just do the Rankin and Bass Hobbit because it's available. <laughs> Forget how much how folksy the music in that movie was. <laughs> It's always so it scary has... to throw a light root and not be able to see where it lands. <laughs> oh, thanks, I get. hate it. It's fun how the Rankin and Bass Hobbit just feels like a Christmas movie, even though it's very much not. Like, at any moment, I would expect it's Gandalf to start going ho ho ho, and then they would have gone out into a jingle, and honestly, it would not have been out of character for the tone of the movie up till then. Mm-hmm. I do love their, um, Meagle, though. I'm oh, yeah. Like, such a creepy little dude. And he's rowing his little boat. Incredible. Just absolute little bastard man. Ooh, you know what we should keep an eye out for? If we can spot the Great Leviathan... Oh, God. Okay, I see what just Loopy happened. Yacht. Ah, see? Hurdy floor is fixed. Okay, so this is gonna be a boss arena. That's like what this is for. I feel like the Great Leviathan skeleton is like up here? Mm, I think it's like pretty north, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it would have hands for us to fight. I'm pretty sure that like thing that's definitely an arena is where one of the Colgaros are. It is, but the Colgaras haven't spawned here because I haven't beaten the one in the overworld, see? Oh, so you're good. You're yeah. <laughs> I'm good-ish, but I think there might be a Lionel around here somewhere. Yeah, yeah that'll be fine. fine. What could it's go wrong? Fine. Yeah, right? We're totally good. I feel like sometimes when we do these streams where it's just you and me because I'm not playing, uh, it does sort of have the energy of, like, you're 
like white knuckle driving and I'm sitting in the back with the margaritas. That's the <laughs> yeah, that's the ideal energy for something like this. Yeah. And if someone would like to draw that and get that fan out of my desk <laughs> on Monday, that'd be great. <laughs> the old like, the oh, more no, I look like okay. Jimmy Buffett, the better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I edit a lot of video essays for a living, so I tend not to watch a lot of video essays, but I did watch the uh, one where those two guys went to every Margaritaville, and uh, good stuff. Very funny. <laughs> the idea of going to every Margaritaville is my personal nightmare. So I just Are those the same guys that did that um... every Rainforest Cafe? Yep. 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 <laughs> I think I might have actually seen one of them on a panel at VidCon two years ago, because huh. uh, he it's the same guy who watched Morbius five times in theaters, and I think he was talking about it on that panel. Huh. Uh, but yeah, someone who had to watch Morbius once, I can't imagine doing that. <laughs> yeah. I was getting, oh, you can watch Morbius in the comfort of your home advertised to me uh, by, like, one of the TV channels I follow. And I was like, cool. That's... It's not even fun. Like, no. <laughs> Uh, the thing with Morbius is like I'm like if this was a fun bad movie maybe I could see a world where I would watch it but I I watched it for Movie Struck it was a patron award for a patron drive and um I watched it with Austin and Noir from uh, Rolling with Difficulty mm -hmm. and it was fun to talk about it with them because we all hated it and we were all mad that we had to do this <laughs> um, but like. If I hadn't had someone to record a podcast with about it afterwards, I think I would have just been mad that I saw that movie. I had a very similar reaction. Uh, my boyfriend and I just watched Don't Worry Darling for some reason, like, oh, two nights yeah. ago. That movie is so nothing. <laughs> just like, the mo like, it's not even bad in any discernible direction, but it's also not good in any discernible direction. It's just like the true neutral of movies in a way that is not entertaining even a little bit. You know, what um, I like about it is that it really feels like a movie. It has the weirdest pacing. I swear, like, I'm like, it just jumps in to weird stuff happening almost immediately, and it doesn't, like, choose the weirder stuff to go later on. It just jumps yeah. into, and all the eggs are empty, and it's like, hey, that's, like, pretty, like, middle of the movie reveal, I feel like. She's, like, nothing really weird has happened to her yet. This can't be the first thing you're doing. Mm. It's just a strange movie. I do think it would have been really funny if they put Morbius in theaters three times, the oh, third fuck. time. I was really hoping that that would be the result of the movie. We almost so got him. It was not, but if only. I think it is always funny when big studios lose money because they are foolish. Yes. Where the hell? Cool. I have no idea where we are. Just how I like it. Nice. I mean, this is all, like, icing at this point. We, we got the thing I wanted. Cap of time. Definitely what I set out to get, knowing what we were going to get. Mm -hmm. Looking at the title, it's completely legit. Yeah, we did, in fact. Um, actually, I don't think we've acquired yep, any pants from the depths yet. We got trousers. We got trousers. Well, I mean, I'm wearing trousers right now. Oh, right. We did get you the booty shorts. Them. I forgot. We got the booty shorts of the hero. The pants. Um, how long will it take me to do a deep dive on the new Team and T movie? <laughs> Uh, I'm trying not to cover any new releases on Movie Struck or anything now to be in standing in solidarity with the strike as much as possible. Right. Um, I do film criticism, so technically there's not like a moratorium on it. Film critics are allowed to work, but uh, just because I have a lot of friends who are either in the union or union hopefuls, and I myself support the unions, I'm trying to just avoid covering new releases and anything that's considered struck work on movie struck so probably will be a while before anything tmnt related comes out but i am extremely excited about this movie and i cannot wait to mm -hmm. <laughs> rip the seal off of it everything about it looks awesome and i'm gonna go see it next week and i'm very good just the animation style and everything God, it was so <laughs> okay. i could not be more mad about the movies that are coming out in the midst of the strike but also that's not the people striking's fault that's fully the studios so right that's they can deal with the consequences of their actions and we can get fair working conditions and perpetuity rights for actors and writers. Right. Yeah. I'm okay with waiting about talking about TMNT if that's the result. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that this has been shining a light on like just how much worse things have been getting for um, like residuals and stuff like that. Because of course, I think for a lot of people, they don't really have an understanding for how actors are supposed to make mm -hmm. money. As evinced by the fact yeah. that a lot of people think that all actors are like Tom Cruise rich, um, but a lot of them people... are working class. <laughs> yeah, 
Like the ones where it's like, here's my residual check. It says it's for 60 cents. It's actually mm-hmm. for 40 cents because they take out taxes. And it's just like, yeah. cool. This is, at that point, fucking insulting. Like, mm-hmm. come on. It's a very similar phenomenon to... I've been very lucky because I'm pretty strict about when I set my own rates as a video editor or producer. <gasps> you um, it. But I also work freelance and have to take taxes out of stuff. And trying to impress upon someone that I am not trying to overcharge them, I am just simply accounting for taxes in the rates that I charge mm-hmm. is a difficult thing to do sometimes. And it's hard to convey that to someone who works like a salaried position where taxes are taken out. Um, so I'm glad that strike is shining light on that for the actors in particular because they have an even crazier pay structure than us contractors. Yeah, exactly. Nice skeleton. All right, we're gonna get in and out, and then we're gonna go to Mekar Island. Nice. Yep. Pacha. What do we got? Another hat. Nice. Great. All right, well, we didn't get the light route that I was looking at. Yeah. Maybe we'll try that. Something I am really excited about, though, is that because I've put a moratorium on new releases and struck work on movie struck, we're going to end up covering a lot of international films Whoa! on the podcast. Jesus Christ, sorry, that scared me. <laughs> nice little goblins up top. Well, I just got <laughs> jump scared by the rock they threw at me, that's all. <laughs> um... But I'm excited to get to cover some international films because I love international films. And also, there's a lot of like, really cool stuff out there that doesn't get a lot of uh, highlights. So I think it'll be neat to see what does get brought to the work uh, podcast. And some like indie stuff too, but I feel like international is an easier pool for a lot of people to pull from. So I wouldn't be too surprised if that's where stuff tended to yeah. clean. Yeah. I've already got some Hong Kong martial arts cinema on the docket. Oh, heck got yeah. Some cool like new wave films. I think there's going to be a lot of real. Stuff. Uh, may or may not be doing another Sailor Moon movie pretty soon, so <laughs> lots of cool stuff coming up. I'm very excited about. Got to do Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind recently, which was also yes. really fun. Oh. Uh, I had Austin from Rolling with Difficulty on. He's like, hey, I want to do this movie. I'm like, absolutely fantastic. No notes. Um, great, great film. Really yeah. fun to talk about. Good to have the ecology guy on for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's a really interesting perspective on that movie. Yeah. I mean, it's a movie he loves in general, and you can look the Struck episode to get all the deets on it. But it was really interesting to have someone who has, like, more of a perspective yeah. on, like, the way the natural world works to, and to bring that kind of angle onto it. Um, Which is so interesting, because, in like, uh, thematically, that's a hugely yeah. important part of Nausicaa. It's just, like, mm-hmm. it's something that Nausicaa finds very interesting that's just kind of hard for the average viewer to, like, fully yeah. invest in. It's something that, like, works for the film's I advantage in that, like... Route in basing things on real creatures or even just real prehistoric creatures like mm. it is at once alien and familiar yeah. to viewers it's like a, enough of a touch point for us to understand what they are and what they're doing but they look different enough to still be scary and yeah. haunting um, and I think that's a really powerful set of tools to utilize in a film uh, especially one that's animated where you really can yeah. control and play around with your monster design um or your bug design or what have you. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it was fun to have an ecological perspective on that because I can only speak to it as someone who uh, has seen a centipede at some point in their life and not someone who understands the name for the prehistoric centipede that the flying creatures are based off of. (laughs) Just on the off chance that that's about to set me on fire. Let's just uh, just damp Um, up a little bit. Got a question on chat about fave underrated international film. Um, I wrote my entire college thesis oh, on <laughs> the Jiangshu subgenre of Hong Kong horror cinema. I will always go to bat for Encounters of the Spooky Kind and Vampire vs. Vampire, and it's that whole 90s string of movies. Uh, Vampire vs. Vampire has a special soft spot in my heart because it is like basically someone digs up Dracula and then that and a child Jiangshu, which is like often translated as Chinese vampire, even if I think that that term might be a little inaccurate. Mm. Um, and it's just like this sort of east meets west martial arts movie with some brand like people just like drop kick dracula and i think that this is very funny <laughs> and it's more of like an interview with a vampire style uh vampire so he's got like the blonde hair and the like the mm. victorian look to him and it's Classic. Very, it's very fun yeah but also um gotta gotta rep the detective d movies they're like sherlock combs for ancient china i think that's also very cool mm. uh always a fun time I, I really like uh, East Asian cinema. <laughs> it's, a, 
it was an area of expertise for me in my more researchy days and i've always been a sucker for someone jumping on some bamboo and doing a drop kick so of course i'm never gonna be mad about that um but uh i also had to cover um daisies on movie struck recently with uh jenna stever which was extremely cool uh she's awesome and uh that is an incredibly joyful and fun czech new wave feminist film uh it's really difficult to explain and it can be a little bit hard to approach because it is uh avant-garde and new wavy and kind of ambiguous but at the same time it is like the most pure expression of feminine joy huh. uh, and i think that that's something that's in, in lieu of the barbie movie if you're looking <laughs> to do a real double feature that like really works do barbie and daisies and i think mm -hmm. you will really understand like the female perspective afterwards because it is just they're both celebrations of kind of the same thing but from different angles that's really cool yeah and again jenna steber is a fantastic uh if you have not uh she used to work for polygon she now does a lot of her own streams and writing on games and media and is a super cool person so if you ever want to check her stuff out definitely do mm -hmm. um the podcast is called Movie Struck. Red's been on it a bunch. <laughs> yeah, three times, I think. Possibly more if you count the ones where I was on with Blue. Yeah. Um, I need to re-listen to the Batman episode, because someone went through our TV Tropes page and added some funny moments from it, and <laughs> I forgot the part where we were talking about, like, uh, um, Penguin, like, trying to pass his, uh, his club off as, like, a respectable establishment, and it's like, hey, that's my mama's cocaine. <laughs> from a, it's from my mama's recipe, so I don't know. He's doing what he's doing. I'm it's a great. So that's tickled. one of my favorite episodes. Um, were it not for the existence of the Bionicle episodes, it would probably be one of. <laughs> yeah. Um, but do you have any like favorite international films that really stand out to you? Uh, I have not seen many. Is the problem? Um, oh, for God's sake! Sorry. I just wanted to get this added on the map, and it didn't work. Uh, but I'm trying to, I've definitely, I've watched a couple, because, like, if nothing else, when th they released, like, a, like, a sort of Journey to the West, but not really movie several years back called Monkey King Hero is Back that I watched, mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't fantastic, <laughs> like, no offense to it, um, mm -hmm. is that a stable down there? Uh, it had some cool moments. Uh, the main thing is that throughout the entire movie, uh, th so basically the gimmick is that uh, in this timeline, Sun Wukong is released from his imprisonment under the mountain by the previous incarnation of Golden Cicada, before Tripitaka. It's mm. this uh, random little kid. Uh, that's the vibe. Um, and it's a, it's a cute premise. And then it just means it's like a little buddy comedy between this kid and the Monkey King. But he's nerfed the entire movie because he's still, like, slightly shackled from being stuck under the mountain. So, like, he's, mm. he's just wearing, like, his, his like, more peasanty clothes and stuff like that. And then finally, in the final battle with the big, um, I don't, I don't remember that guy's deal. I think, he, like, he was a big snake guy and he ate, like, kid souls. Anyway, uh, he finally gets the last shackle off and, like, he, he gets his full redesign, you know, the look that he has when he is the great sage equal to heaven. And it's very cool. And for the first time in the movie, he, like, pulls out the staff from behind his ear, which is where he traditionally keeps it in the book. He just basically didn't have the magic to get it out and back to normal size, which is a fun mm -hmm. way to do that. Except the rest of the movie's just not great around that one moment. Um, yeah, I feel like the Journey to the West is one of the greatest stories ever told, and mm -hmm. as a result, has been at it adapted so many times that just not every adaptation can still be a great adaptation of the greatest story ever told you yeah. know, like there's a point where like some versions just aren't going to be as good and that's okay yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make it any less disappointing though you know it's such a it's such a good story <laughs> it is yeah and also the, the movie is in this like slightly weird position where when they dubbed it i think they got jackie chan to voice sun wukong <laughs> which is a fun idea except Jackie Chan is a very normal sounding guy with a very mellow voice. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. is not how he sounded in the original audio. He had, you know, a 
more regular, like, Sun Wukong voice. He was very brash and loud and angry. So hearing him dubbed by, like, my old man or Jackie Chan is like, okay, so that's not exactly. I All mean, right. like, I get the joke, but I don't know. Oh, we should try to get up there. What it is. I'm very excited for Jackie Chan voicing Master Splinter in the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Oh, I mean, that's just that's perfect. Well. On the subject of people who should sound gentle and mellow. <laughs> Master goddamn Splinter. Master fucking Splinter. Uh, have either of us seen Lego Monkey Kid? Um, ah, I, I haven't, I know to. of it, but Red, I believe they, <laughs> you had some influence on it. Well, <laughs> that's what we were told. Uh, when the show was first coming out, we got emailed by somebody who had worked on it. Um, and they said that the team had like watched my like summary videos to get like the, the general vibe. Uh, obviously that was not the only research they did, but I was kind of blown mm -hmm. away by that. Um, I've seen bits from it. I haven't been able to sit down and watch it just because, like, it's, oh man, it's, and what we were talking earlier about, like, when I'm making a thing, I don't want to, like, deal with too much stuff too close to that thing, because I don't want to, like, absorb its ideas. That's yeah. kind of how I feel about it. Like, I really like designing the characters from the ground up, like, just taking the way that they are actually described in the text, drawing what I think that looks like, and just having a good time. Um, and that leads to things like my design of Red Boy is not like any version of Red Boy that I could find. Because uh, I kind of like it when it's like, oh, this guy, he's a good guy. He still has horns, though. Like, I just think that's fun. Mm -hmm. um, that's just kind of how I roll. But, you know, oftentimes I'll look up how these characters were designed by other adaptations. And it's completely different, but in a way that, like, makes sense. and makes me think like, oh, yeah, I could have done that. Or, like, that, that would have made sense for me. I just feel like maybe I... Maybe I, like, did I read it wrong? Did I... Anyway, so I... Lego Monkey Kid has all these character designs for, like, major recurring figures. Uh, and I kind of just want to not see them until I get through those characters' designs in my own mm -hmm. thing. Um, oh, that shrine is way farther away than I thought it was. <laughs> it's okay, you'll make it. I... Oh, no, I'm out of pins! No! Uh, okay. Yeah. What pins can I get rid of? Oh, yes, this one. Get out of here, you. <laughs> As I was saying, you're mine. All right. <sighs> but yes, the things I've seen from LEGO Monkey Kid are very, very cool. Uh, it's got- th that studio does really fluid 2D animation. Um, which is interesting, because all the character designs are, of course, quite simplified, because they are meant to look like Lego minifigs. Whoops. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just a red one? Alright, maybe we kill that thing first. Actually, let me switch to better pants. God, we have no good pants except for these. It's like, we've got, got the, the, booty shorts. We got the like tunic the of the outfit, wild, right? we got the cap of the wild, and we got... <laughs> Come nope. on, you gotta, you know what you gotta do. What, what, what do I gotta do? Booty shorts, man. Trousers of the We year. can't even appreciate the booty shorts right now. That's what makes them perfect. We literally can't tell that Link is wearing pants. That's Link's intended aesthetic. Ugh. This is unfortunately the best armor set I currently have. <laughs> Victory. Okay. Just real quick. Real quick. All right. Now, we want this thing to turn into Phantom Ganon. My usual strat is to fire dazzle arrows and then bomb arrows at it. Because the dazzle will stun it and then the bomb will do a bunch of damage. I do know that you are somewhat limited on dazzle fruit. <laughs> yes. Ooh, and bombs. Okay. Ah, shit. Fuck 
Fuck off. No, 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 no. No. Absol- No! <laughs> well, I hope you guys are happy. I'm having a great time. This is what I get for playing fair. Thank you guys for getting us to over 5k ah. raids for the Hawaiian Wildfire Relief. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, guys! Generous donations that uh, not only are we going to be able to help uh, a lot of the folks who have been displaced by or hurt by the ah. wildfires that are raging in Maui, but also uh, Red has to now deal with the consequences of her actions. Fine. Okay. All right, where is it going to load me? Only one way to find out. I guess we are... Oh, goody. Exactly where I wanted to be. What the? Oh, that's weak sauce. You're on the island. I'm on the island, but the gloom hands are gone. Ah. Uh. Now how will we prove our worth to all of the viewers? Someone in chat would like to know who the girl who sounds almost exactly like red is. Uh, one of us is red and one of us is not red. Yeah, you gotta be more specific. <laughs> one of us always tells the truth and the other always lies. I'm Indigo. I work on the yes. podcast. <laughs> so you think the hand will come back? No. <laughs> Ugh. Alright, well, let's go get that shrine. Then find another gloom hand to fight. I was considering, like, I think I can warp out of here. But then I was like, no, I'll, I'll sit here and take my... my I'll, I'll accept my fate. And that didn't even work the way I wanted it to. You tried. I did. No one can say you didn't. Oh, there's a chest out there. Yeah. Is Indigo good at video games? I think I'm average. I don't think I'm particularly good at or bad at them. I'm not winning a Smash Bros. tournament, but I'm also capable of running through a Zelda game without dying too frequently. I think it's a, I think I'm a true neutral of video game players. I think I'm neither good nor bad. I just am. The every gamer. Yeah. I think I am slightly faster at finishing games sometimes, but I think that, that might just be like Feeding through it more so than actual skill. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting there's master hand. Okay, when we get that shrine, we're gonna come back there because I know that there is a uh, there's a gloom hand on this island. Sweet. Yeah. Which OSP gate member is the master gamer? I think Red might be the best at games out of all of us. Oh shucks. I definitely have the most fun streaming them. <laughs> No one's, like, particularly bad. I think that streaming does sort of, like, nerf anyone's given ability to play a game because mm -hmm. you have to consider many other things in addition to the game itself. Um, Sometimes you give like, yourself dumb challenges like, that make your life harder. <laughs> yeah, in terms of raw gamer skill, I think Red is probably the one who would be most willing to undertake a challenge and complete it. <laughs> um, but none of us are, like, that much higher above each other in terms of skill than the others. I think it's a pretty even playing field. Yeah, most of my. If we did a Smash Bros. contest, most of us are coming out uh, winning one fourth of the time. Yeah, most of my skill just comes from playing Ike, <laughs> which is basically playing the game on easy mode. Yeah. Someday we'll do our TMNT Shredder's Revenge stream when the Yusaku Yojimbo. Yes, I have that, out, and then on... we will discover. I have it on my Switch. I've just never opened it, but it's gonna yeah. happen. Well, they announced the Yusagi Yo Yojimbo DLC, and I was like, oh, Red will be really into this. Yes. Because uh, I think it's a fun, Shredder's Revenge is a fun game. It's a nice little, like, kind of arcade-like. It's very entertaining. Um, and then they announced the DLC, and I'm like, oh, Red, yes. we gotta, we, together, we, we gotta must. go through this game and stream it. Like, it's just, it's calling to us. We I can, can be Casey, must. you can be J Yo Yusagi, it's gonna be perfect. I can be my boy. You can be your boy. figure out where the hell the Elden Volcano is. Ooh, more shrines. Sorry, not the Elden Volcano, the Elden Great Skeleton. Because if we get the third one, we'll have the full set of the wild. And I won't need to wear these booty shorts anymore. 
but they're so fashionable. The f- these shorts are so short that I can't even like upskirt to see that they're there. High fashion. Can't fight crime if you ain't cute. I guess. do for 6k Ooh. well at bare minimum i'm going down that hole gotta see what's down there we got it i mean i'm, I'm just, just gonna do that on my own it's just right it's just right it's my hole it was made for me someone in chat is saying the pants of the wild are still shorts great there's no escape <laughs> We got a suggestion for a Lionel hunt at 6k? Mmm. A little difficult with the current number of hearts I have. <laughs> oh. But not impossible. Not impossible. I think... Hmm. I think we are in the right neighborhood for the Elden Great Skeleton. Every day we get a little closer. Going faster. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, hey, hey, you know. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, hit boy. Midnight, my time. It's going to start getting oh, no. weirder from here. I slept in pretty late today, so I'm actually feeling pretty fine. But there is just a point where like, my brain's like, nah, we're, we're in it now. You know, now yeah. everything's happening. Oh, it's the dark one. <laughs> it's the dark one. <laughs> Little did they know I came prepared. What if there were hands in here? That would be fun! That would be a way to make them more exciting and worse, which I would be okay with. As things stand, the only way that the gloom hands kill me is if I throw for content by not climbing the nearest tree! <laughs> so you see my frustration. Figure out the purpose of these spike panels, if not to kill me. I suspect. Or you may be on the uh, the do. Ah. Maybe they're hoping you'll just run into it if you don't have a light. Maybe. That would be very funny. Come on, boys, get it out of your system. Oh. They reset. I see. So, well, these ones. They lose. Oh wow. It's just what I wanted. <laughs> Luminous stone. Get it? Because it's all dark in here. Yeah. Nope. It's very, very clever. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Let's go. Let's finish this shrine. Let's get the egg. Stop it. We're gonna get a sporb, and then I can get another heart or another chip of stamina whatever your heart tells you yeah, only whatever you my can decide. hearts tell me ah oh, goody there's a door in ah. here somewhere ah it's a chest mm-hmm hmm now where the hell is that door only one way to find out. I guess. Also, the next gloom hand, I'm just climbing the nearest wall and letting it kill itself. Just fair warning, everybody. I suppose you've earned it. Some of them don't go away and then have to turn into Phantom Ganons. Those are exciting. Ah. Ah. There's like a couple, like, basically mandatory boss fight ones that have to be fought. You can't just wait them out. But. I don't know where they are, so. Another shrine bites the dust. Da -da -da -da. Hooray! Now we can warp back to the Ziggy's taken to want. sleeping in a Lego box a few weeks ago. Oh, we yes. The Lego bonsai, and um, it's just cat bed shaped. Hmm. But she has fully destroyed the bounds of the box. Like, the front of it is just fully flattened. And it is just sort of a piece of flat cardboard at this point, and she's still pretty dedicated to sleeping in it. So I feel like I can't get rid of it. But I'm also like, it's just a piece of trash that lives on my floor forever. <laughs> right. 
Okay. Okay, we might be able to make this in time. We are going to be immediately set on fire, but I think that's a small price to pay. Mm. Okay. So, this is the chasm that Dinrail enters the depths through. And here she comes now! <laughs> ah. Oh, that looks like probably spam? Let me find out. I'm just gonna put him in timeout. Alright, we'll deal with the type of ruins later. I do think the Elden Great Skeleton has to be pretty close to this. Hmm. Ugh, but they're taking so long to get here. <sighs> Alright, well, they'll catch up. There's a fun boss fight down here that we're not going to even attempt at this point. <laughs> oh, sure. It's not even, like, trivial on my full hearts and stamina file, so... What's the nearest light loop? Oh, found it. Hmm, that doesn't look very near to me. That would like us to have a water break if we have not already. Ah. I can take a little sippy of some tea. Take Hold a little on. sip. Take a fucking sip, babe. Give me just a second. <laughs> I gotta get more haunt- where did- oh, okay. First I gotta get a little more haunted, then I'll take a little sippy. We'll deal with the Eagle Clan later. Maybe. That's how I feel every time I see them. I'm like, ah, you're a problem for later. Yeah. <laughs> like, if I run into a boss fight, I guess I'll do it, but I'm, I'm never, like, charging ahead. It's like, ugh, it would be a whole thing. we can get the Elden Great Skeleton without danger of being on fire. The ideal. It's pretty lava -y down here, though. I don't know. Mm. Whoops. Yeah. We're good. Uh, we're not doing a no map challenge. This is a setup stream for a larger charity stream that'll be happening later in August where we're going to be running and getting all of the glyphs and all of the towers. So yep. the reason the map is not filled in is because we are saving the save file for that. Uh, so you'll have to bear with some of the darkness for now. Yes. Well, I am getting light roots because the depths are uh, not part of our plans for the challenge run, no. but... We thought two out of three map layers was probably enough. <laughs> yes. Hmm. This is basically just me exploring the... What? <laughs> okay. Never have I been filled with such dread. <laughs> what an exciting title. I have. Several questions. Like, have you been to the Bloopy Den? Oh yeah, it's gorgeous. Maybe it's like that. Maybe they're a bunch of little guys. It's a bunch of mini Just a single Gliok yeah. head, like a little worm. I just wanted to get to the light route so I could unlock some of the mini map. <laughs> 
Did you, you fellas find him? gotta fucking stop. Great. Awesome. Very efficient of us. Chat seems pretty split about climbing the wall or running the other direction. <laughs> well. I feel like this... I think we might have gotten the location th through that wall? Because I don't actually think this is where the Gliok is. I think you might be on top of the cliff. See, that's what I want. Yeah, this isn't the Gliok Den. The Gliok Den is somewhere completely different. <laughs> Trust me, you'd know if this was the Gliok Den. We'd be able to see the fucker. They glow in the dark. Or rather, the, uh, the gloom this ones one do. Because he's in the depths. No, it's a, it's a gloom... It, it, it's a King Gliok with gloom effect. So, uh, it's, it's the same kind of luminous that all the gloom monsters are. Huh? And it's in an enclosed area directly under the Typhlo Ruins, spoiler alert, so... I think we ran into the, like, label for, oh, that's that part of the map, because we, like, reached the outer wall where it was. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. I feel for you... Leslie Rivera, who has to use an ice cream scoop because there are no spoons to eat your soup with. No. I too have had the incorrect utensil for soup in the past. I was sitting outside of the Fire Island ferry. I would miss, just missed it by a few minutes and I had like 45 minutes to kill before the next one came through. So I went to get clam chowder from the chowder place my friend said had the best clam chowder. And they seemed very busy and stressed inside, so I tried to get a little clam chowder to go, and then I got to the parking lot, and I was trying to eat my clam chowder, but I realized that they had given me no spoons, only forks, and then I had to eat clam chowder with a fork, because I did not want to go back in and interrupt their very busy lunch rush in order to get a spoon. Truly, a life of endless suffering. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was sitting in a parking lot in New York. <laughs> there I was. <laughs> It was lightly overcast, but like 90 degrees, and I was eating hot clam chowder with a fork. Hot clam chowder is not the correct temperature to eat clam chowder. I mean, like, like... What, are you eating cold clam chowder? Well, like, okay, I guess it's like warm clam chowder, that's good. Too hot, a little weird. But no, you're absolutely right. I think right. it just came from a vat. I think yeah. that they were scooping the clam chowder by the vat full, you know? That makes sense. And it had no opportunity to cool because it was like 90 degrees out. I think it was New England. But honestly, ah! could not tell you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry. I like, it was like, what was that snarling noise? Oh, fuck! <laughs> Ugh, okay. I really like a clam chowder. Um, I used to go to. Is it Smith's in. Jersey. That was like my family's go-to clam chowder place for a while. I think they might have closed recently. Mm. But they would get... We would get... Just one time when you're down the shore, one night you always ate hot soup and it was always clam chowder. And that was just like a thing that we would have to do every time. So it was either really enjoy the clam chowder or suffer. <laughs> I prefer yeah, a Manhattan that's... red clam chowder too in New England. But they're both good. I feel like the other great skeletons up this way. It was clam chowder in a styrofoam container every time. <laughs> no bread bowls to be seen. Mm, that's tragic. Bread bowl is the best way to consume clam chowder. I would agree, but I, I've only ever eaten it in a styrofoam container. <laughs> Never been presented clam chowder in any other situation. Mm. Good sourdough bread bowl is the move for something like that. Mm. Used to, I used to be a real fiend for a Panera bed bread bowl. I don't really live near a Panera anymore. Man, that was the go-to fast casual. Those were the but. days. Yeah. In high school, everyone gets their license, and you're like, okay, now like we can just go after school and get something to eat. And it was like, let's all go to Panera. Panera. Or H Mart. It was Panera and H Mart. I either got spicy pork with rice and a bunch of different kimchi's, or 
a nice bread bowl of some soup or another. Mm. Either way, I was happy. <laughs> Either way, what joy. Mm -mm. Now I make a lot of, uh, I'll make a big batch of cauliflower soup, which is my dad's uh, recipe, which is basically just tomatoes, cauliflower, Italian seasoning, breadcrumbs, parsley, and then just water, and it just like boils for a while. Mm. Um, and it's delicious. It's incredibly light. It's like fla exactly as flavorful as you want it to be. I sometimes add some red pepper flakes just to add like a little hint of spice. It's not like really intended to be a spicy thing, but it can be. You could add other stuff to it if you wanted, but I like to keep it pretty plain. But that with like a little slice of focaccia, top tier. Yeah. One of the best foods you can eat. Ooh. Just a nice, like, comforting, simple dish. Okay. <sighs> yeah, we're fine. I this don't think the styrofoam is the optimal container for clam chowder. I think it's just the only container I've ever been offered clam chowder in. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, would I suggest eating what the it out of styrofoam? Heck? No, but it's in there. <laughs> if it's in the styrofoam, you know, yeah. getting it out is kind of what you're going to be doing anyway, so. I enjoy a clam in general, though. I feel like it, it's of the seafoods. I'm generally a shellfish person. <laughs> got very lucky that I'm not allergic. Mm. Uh, I like some steamers. Always solid. Little white wine, so white wine sauce, little butter. Good stuff. Ooh. I feel like now. the problem I have with like, like shellfish I'm fine with, but specifically like bivalves, I guess, mm -hmm. when I start overthinking them. Oh <laughs> shit! Hold on. Sorry, just caught fire. You know oh, how it oh, is. Nice. Uh. Oh no, my, my stick on a stick. Crab versus lobster? Well, I've never had any lobster, so I'm gonna go crab. But also, I feel like crabs taste very good. So maybe I don't really care if I'm missing out on lobster, you know? Ah, my, what's uh, on fire? Oh, right. My poppy that. makes, um, my grandfather, he makes this, uh, dish that we all just call crabs and spaghetti, and that's exactly what it is. And whenever people will go crabbing down the shore, or, like, he would just go, he's a, he's a retired postman, so he just can go fish all day if he wants. More power to him. Uh, we'll he'll go crabbing and then he'll just make a big mound of spaghetti and crabs and like a, some <gasps> sort of gravy and it's delicious. I haven't had it in a while. I wonder if maybe I should go crabbing. Oh my god, I'm out of the fire zone. But I did find Dinrau, which would put me back in the fire zone. We're just yeah. gonna get this light route and see if we can spot the great skeleton from the map. Since we ta started talking about seafood, people have suggested I am from Boston and also from Baltimore, both of which are incorrect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as we all know, the only two cities on the coast. <laughs> um, I'm sure lobster is very good. I've just never had any. I went to pool in Boston and somehow never managed to eat any lobster while I was there, I think, because I'm usually pretty broke. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just never, it's just never, I've never had the opportunity to be presented with a lobster. <laughs> yeah. Whole lobster is not the most appetizing thing. Not the easiest thing yeah. to get through. Yeah, I guess like even in like the context of like a lobster mac and cheese or a lobster roll, like I've just never it's just never been a thing I've been presented with. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Sorry! It's not cut up yet. <laughs> I was too distracted by the beauty and wonder of nature! It's like Jurassic Park all over again. <laughs> they do move in herds. Fuck off! Stop leaving in herds! Okay. Show me a skeleton. You coward. Okay. Yep, that's all well and good. Yep, okay. Yeah, I guess... Hmm... Hmm. I really like scallops. If I had to pick an expensive seafood, that's probably the one I would go with. Mm. They're also surprisingly easy to cook.
You know, I think our thing it was with clams is that my family is Italian American, so we do the Feast of the Seven Fish uh, oh, yeah. around the holidays. Yeah. And it's like the one time of year. There's like there's two instances in the year where I am eating seafood, and it's the one time I'm down the shore in the summer and the Feast of the Seven Fish. And the Feast of the Seven Fish really is just whatever fish make it for us because we're very we're not very traditional. So like, mm. there's I have five uncles on that side plus all the second cousins, second uncles and stuff who come and their families. Um, mm. I have one uncle who brings a sushi platter every year, one uncle brings crab legs, another one uh, makes bakala stew, and those are the only consistent seafood dishes. Everything else is just whatever fish make it. Um, smelts, usually a bunch of fried things, but yeah, it's oof. This is a fun approach to Feast of Seven Fish. I like that. I like that we take it so casually. Cause there's too many of us for us to actually sit down around a table and have like a proper meal. So I think part of it is just like everything has to be very buffet style. Mm. Um, and so bringing, you know, the silver trays full, like the silver little dinky aluminum trays full of whatever fried fish you can get your hand on is a pretty safe bet. Um, so we tend to just be serving up whatever people remember to bring. And it's good. It's usually, it's, it's, very, it's very good stuff all the time. All right. Whoops. Oops. I have a hedge. Move along. Favorite Philly specific food or meal in case uh, any of you visit the city? Um, Philly's famous for its cheesesteak, but I think if you would like a hot sandwich of some kind while you're in the city, go for a roast pork with provolone. I like mine with broccoli raw, but you don't gotta like that if you're not into the bitter stuff. Um, John's is famous for it. Uh, John's roast pork. I really like the Denix one as well, which you can get at Running Terminal if you're kind of doing more of the touristy stuff. Um, that's probably like that's the one thing that I would tell you to get uh, if you're going to Philly's got a pretty good food scene honestly there's a lot of really great restaurants and stuff but in terms of things that are like specific to the city go for the roast pork oh, shit. the sleeper sandwich oh, of the boy. city oh boy oh boy there we go Phew. ow <laughs> great all right boys I'll just uh. Just be going to pick up your little yeah, surprise. Yeah, just be on my way, thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, funny. Clever name, boys. Very clever. Yeah. Got some nanners? No, crystallized charge. Even better. You can't go wrong with the cheese sticks, but, like, if you're gonna do... If you really want to, like, taste Philly... <laughs> Get yourself, a, get yourself a roast pork. A little provolone. A little broccoli rub. Just yes. Nope. Okay, where's the, where's the mirror? There's one? also two very good ice cream places in Philly, and they're kind of on opposite ends of the city. So if, you are, if you're in Center City, uh, kind of near City Hall, you should go to 1900 Ice Cream on 20th. They have incredible soft serve, but they only have like two flavors on any given day. Um, and the other one is Franklin Fountain, which is famous for being an incredibly historic ice cream place, and that is right by Independence Hall and everything. So if you're looking for a little sweet treat, those are the two spots to hit. For one, I have ice cream, but I think that might just be because it's closer to my apartment. <laughs> like in terms of which side of the city, that's what I'm going to. Okay. Really cold sandwich, you can't go wrong with a hoagie from just like a miscellaneous deli place. Just get like the Italian hoagie, you're very solid. There's no way to go wrong. Alright, I want that light route, and I want to not be on fire when I get it. Hopefully I can get what I want. <laughs> Red, you got any hometown essential treats? What? Meals. Really? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, there's, I, I, I'm one of the people who like, if I didn't go out of my way to like try new things, would have the world's most limited palate of like, I sure do like buttered pasta with a little bit of cheese and pizza and like you know just really basic like carb and uh, mm -hmm. and such like combos. Um, link. There we go. Uh, Really don't want to deal with that guy. Really would rather rather, rather yeah. steer clear, but I also don't want to be on fire. Which I think I feel like part of like Fuck! 
growing I'm on fire somewhere anyway. living in a city is rather than going by like the famous food from somewhere like like yeah philly's famous for cheesesteaks but that's not where I, I wouldn't take someone to get cheesesteaks if they were visiting me in the city i'd be like no this is the restaurant that i live near that i really like that is like very good at a particular kind of food maybe if it's not specific to philly other than it's here like i feel like there's a certain point where living somewhere your favorite food mor morphs from what is the the thing the f place is famous for to places that are actually very good that you like to go to because of your own palate, which mm -hmm. makes it hard to recommend them to out of towners because you're like, no, 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 really good Thai food actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait. There we go. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Floor is lava. Floor is lava. All's well. You're just gonna be a little sizzly. And just a little crispy fried in our festive hat. <laughs> oh, Ziggy. You're so warm and so stinky. <laughs> My Ziggy is feeling so how I feel. Sorry, this cat gets stinkier the later in the day it is. I don't know what the science behind Where that is with my running theory. I just want to go up. Oh wait, I remember. You have a favorite sage in this game. Oh, uh, I mean, Tulin is the one I use the most. So yeah, I, I guess feel like Tulin. Absolutely not. In terms of personality, probably either Sidon or um, Riju. Of but course. Like, I also love Tulin. Basically, the only one I don't really care that much about is Yonobo, but. <laughs> I oh, I like Yonobo. He's he's I the only sage who's like, got like. Just you know, a non-warrior personality, and I really respect that. I guess. He just doesn't do anything for me. I'm like, ah, you're fine. You're just a guy. He's a sweet guy, though. Yeah, I got no problem with him. Yeah. He's fulfilling an important role. Kind of the same way I feel about Daruka. I'm like, I got no problem with you. You're fulfilling an important role in this quad. But skeleton spotted! My favorite. Ah, skeleton? That thing we're looking for. Tulin's ability is the only one I ever use. And then... I think maybe Riju or Sidon for actual favorite speech. Come on, let me out of the fire. Let me out of the being on fire zone. I would love to not be on fire anymore. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fuck it, I guess. <laughs> mm. Sometimes when Ziggy shapes her head and her ears uh, are so big, they go pa 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 pa. That's incredible. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. <laughs> okay. What is the OSP lore explanation for Ziggy and Cleo's relationship? They've never met. They have no relationship. <laughs> yes. I guess, like, in the meta, they'd be colleagues, but I don't know if Ziggy could really hold down the job, so... Maybe someday. Right now, she is just a thoughtless little guy. Just no thoughts head empty. Okay. Shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's okay. We got this. Skeleton. We've, yep. We're so close. We can work back here. Oh god damn it! As promised, we're letting it die. Sup, bitch? Oh no, I'm on fire! Shit! Hold on. Uh oh. No, it's not working! <laughs> ah, my cunning scheme ruined! God, please die faster. <laughs> okay, we're good for now. Let me up, let me up. Ha! Oh, did you see that? I probably will in a few seconds. Oh, that was clutch. I just saw it. Yeah. Now die. Do me a favor and die. That's right. Suffer. <laughs> Any minute now. It'll figure it out. Ha! Yes. Perish! You're weak. Oh! Speaking of perishing. There, we're all good. 
All right. Job well done, folks. Let's just a uh, <laughs> real quick sprint to the skull. Get that trunk. Get the fuck out of here. Doing your best. Yeah, I am. And my best is pretty good today. Except uh, a little bit of floor is lava. Okay, you know what? Let's top it up with a splash fruit. Yeah. Then we're just gonna... Floor is lava, floor is lava, floor is lava, floor is lava, floor is lava! Ow! Okay. How do you have so much squishy in your little paws? <laughs> and then also so much pressure that you can put on my leg? She is full of beans. I would explain the stinky. <laughs> it is her blessing and her curse. Alright, gimme. I require your pants. Oh, these are very respectable. You guys said they were booty shorts. Alright, let's go back to the above ground where the floor don't hurt so much. <laughs> well, at least you got pants. Whew. Well, that was unpleasant. But we checked out all the, uh, <laughs> all the dark skeletons. That was fun. Hell yeah. And now we have light roots, uh, and some of them have, like, uh, ascend points where we could use them to get back to the surface, which is nice. Hell yeah. All setting up, all lining up. All's well. <sighs> We're gonna Stop get another heart, I think. Cord, Ziggy. Hey. Let her prime. She's trying to eat my phone charger. You can't do that, it's electric. <laughs> Alright, that is a little bit of a crime. Stop encouraging her to do crime. I'm only trying to protect her. I'll stop encouraging her to do crime when she stops being so good at it. She's not even good at it. She always gets caught. Okay, well, how else is she going to learn then? <laughs> Why not doing it? <laughs> I'll stop encouraging her to do crime when she gets good. Every morning, Ziggy and I have a routine. At 5 a.m., she goes and she tries to knock anything that's not glued down off of my desk. Beautiful. Then she tries to bite my mic. Inevitably, I hear one of these things happening, and I kick her out of my room. I close the door. At 9 a.m. or 8 a.m., about, she will scream and jump onto the door to make it knock until I go and feed her in the morning. We have and this is every there. single day. Well, that's extremely funny. She's still very bad at being a cat, and I love it. An incredible routine that we've established. And also, I haven't gotten a night's sleep past 5 a.m. in so long. Mm. That's rough, buddy. I'm so tired. Okay. <laughs> okay. Alright, first of all, let me put on a slightly less hideous combination of clothes. This is about as Stop. disjointed as it could possibly be. <laughs> We don't need any uh, armor anymore. We're back in the in the one hit wonder zone. Okay, let's see. Whew. Are there any more interesting chunks in the depths we want to check out? All the skeletons was a pretty big hoist. Hmm. Oh right. I wanted to pick a fight with those gloom hands you guys were talking about. Oh yeah. As Better late than never. Well, we did raise over 5k. I feel like it's only fair. Mm, yes, yes. Also, I feel like it's only right if you do that with the shorts on, you know? Okay. <laughs> Let me just real quick. <laughs> Allow me to gear up my... Oh. Yep, okay. Alright, hold on. Okay, first the tunic. And the stupid hat. And then... See, they made these shorts long enough that you could see that he was actually wearing shorts. No, these ones have on. no such weakness. Alright, well, we're all decked out it's with 12 the, whole um, armor. Very trendy, like bike shorts thing that was going around last year, like mm. big oversized uh, crew neck and then the bike shorts. Huh. Very Manhattan, like walking around the Upper West Side on a Saturday morning kind of dealio. Oh, I believe that. All right, now I know that Gloom Hands are on this island because I've been ambushed by them before. I just don't remember where they are. 
Which is exactly how we like it, right? <laughs> Everything's gonna be fine. Evening, ladies. I guess it's morning. Morning, ladies. I remember the first time I got ambushed on this island, uh, I had pulled out a Zonai cooking pot because I needed to cook something because I'd just gotten my ass kicked by something. And it gave me the, like, you can't cook, there are monsters nearby. And I was like, where? And then the sky turned red. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, good stuff. Super fun. Totally normal to want energy. Alright. This isn't a particularly big island. You'd be bound to find them eventually. Yeah. Some of these guys might be the eager trees, though. Yeah, that's true. I've I heard of those detail guys. That when you go into one of the ego hideouts in the ego uniform, you talk to them, and they're like talking about how they got operatives pretended to be trees and stuff. And it's like this is very entertaining. I like this little detail that the reason that I never had to fight a tree before is because <laughs> this is a new. Well, it's a little weird. I don't. Because the thing is, the ego were like, yeah, some of us are even disguising ourselves as trees, but I, I almost wonder if they're like wrong about that. Because ever mm. means are not like we never meet a gloom corrupted yiga in the depths. But there are gloomy ever means in the depths. Which makes me think, like, the trees actually do hate you. That's just the vibe. Oh no. Maybe hold it's on. one of the ones. Because sometimes you'll find, like, a banana out in the wild between some trees, and that is Ega. I think it's just a mix of the two. Or, like, some of the um, newspaper quest lines, they are disguised as trees. So maybe it's specific to those. I don't mm. know. That would be my guess. Sensing a presence. <laughs> it just vibes. They're rancid. <gasps> nope, 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 nope. off and or die in that order on how this completely changes the environment All right guys really trying here you got this ooh <clears throat> pardon me let me just <clears throat> real quick <laughs> just uh, uh it's it's fine it's cool it's fine it's fine we're fine Mmm. Exciting. <sighs> he eats it, immediately goes back to being dead on his feet. Stop playing the spooky music, I know. You ever tried to eat food too fast? It is awful for your gut. <laughs> yeah, he's gotta wash it down with something. <sighs> it's just been... <laughs> Like for the love of God. Like, okay. Indigo help Red with an anecdote. Um, I would tell you about the time I uh, almost tripped former, or no, I fell on my ass in front of former White House photographer Pete Souza. All right, let's go, girls. <laughs> I was carrying a bunch of film equipment into the communication school I went to, and he was being honored uh, there that week, and he was in a glass building next to the entrance, and they were having their little ceremony, and he's standing on the stage, and I'm like, whoa, is that former White House photographer Pete Souza? And as I'm looking over at him, I'm not looking at the ice patch in front of me, and then carrying thousands of dollars of film equipment and audio recording devices, I slipped and completely uh, wiped out and fell on my ass in front of former White House photographer Pete Souza. And it was at that exact moment that I was making eye, eye contact with former White House photographer Jesus. Pete Souza. Um, and I swear he did a little chuckle the minute oh. I went down. <laughs> no! Luckily, none of the equipment broke. And that was a story that every parent I gave a tour of that building to thought was hilarious. Yeah. God damn it, dude. Sorry. Nobody's fault except mine and Phantom Ganon. <laughs> I 
I made a promise. Star I intend to keep question. it. I've only seen the newish movies with Chris Pine. Uh, where would you suggest I start with the original shows? Best way to ease into the deeper lore? Uh, if Star you're going to start... Star Trek, yeah. Uh, I always recommend TNG, the next generation, as a place to start because it's the easiest one to go forward or back from. This guy sucks. I think it has the most general audience appeal. And then you can also move on to like Voyager and Deep Space Nine without too much difficulty. The tone is pretty consistent between the three. Uh, you see some characters overlapping. It's where Trek really starts to have characters like recur. Um, I don't Stop recommend starting with the original series because as much as I have a lot of nostalgia and love for it, it, is, it doesn't necessarily always hold up for everyone. Uh, it's fun to go back to and catch a couple episodes of, maybe watch like the Turbos episode or any other like the iconic episodes. But um, right. I think it's not a great starting point. I definitely would say like go for the next generation. Um, a lot of the newer stuff is also very good, but a lot of Trek tends to build on itself as much as it is its own contained show. So I think that starting with that like 90s kind of uh, almost self-contained series triad really makes for a nice entry point. And then you can get a lot of the movies in there. Because there's some, there's some fun Trek movies. What's the wind doing? Oh, because this is on a wind blade or something, right? Wow. Great, alright, well I can't use this unless I fuse it to something. But I did it, guys! And I didn't even die this time. Nice. Oh wait, I needed that. Whew! Yeah. Alright, what do we do for 6k now? Huh. Huh. Probably back to the depths, right? Maybe just a little bit, just... But we did find that King Gliok den. Yeah, come on. I can't even fight a regular Gliok right now. Uh -huh. hmm. I can only make suggestions. I can't tell you what to do. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only here to be the voice of unreason. <laughs> the voice of madness, as it were. Yeah. Uh Everyone needs a little devil that sits on their shoulder and tells them to do silly things. That's me. Perfect. Oh, wait, hold on. Angel that... not provided. Oh, no, we've already gotten that stable. All right. All right. Oh, Someone's what's saying ride a dragon for 6k? Yeah. Yes, that's a good idea. Um... Dragon selfie, ride a dragon. Maybe you can just do something dragon related. You know what I want? Figure out how to get up there without just needing five million. Oh wait, what am I doing? Hold on. Try Lionel. Good try, Lionel. I have a bunch of stamina food. I can probably actually paraglide from Lookout Landing to the castle. Hmm. And then I can get that one shrine, and then I won't need to do that again. Hell yeah. All right. So I'm gonna do that on my own, and then in six K, we uh, yeah, let's try to ride a dragon. All right. It is a little bit um, situational. Depends on like when the guy when the guy shows up, but anyway. I'm sure we can figure it out. Yeah. Indigo, have you ever considered playing during one of the streams? Uh, we typically play single player games, and I fuck up, so <laughs> no. Not opposed, but it's not yeah. really in the cards. I don't think. It hasn't really come up. No. If we do that, well, when we do that, TMNT Shredder's Revenge. Though. Oh yeah. Multiplayer, baby. Yeah. <laughs> How it's gonna be time food? to thrive. Oh my god, I have so much stamina food. Uh, some of it's even okay. Alright, we're good. We're good. All we really need is to get onto the island. Try going to the lookout landing Sky Island. Oh yes, the least rewarding place to go in the game. Sometimes you just need a challenge. Oh, I took that challenge. It wasn't worth the journey, it. Journey, not the destination. Mm. These are both so wasteful in the hearts department. I always feel oh, bad about making food that's stamina related, but I also don't want to use my monster parts on elixirs, so then I end up making food, and I'm like, ah, yeah. What have I done? What am I doing? What have I done? Become a thief in the night. Become a dog on the run. Okay. 
Just give me that shrine. That's all I care about. Because then I'll be able to teleport back whenever I want. And I'll get a lorb. Even better. Gotta go see Tremors tomorrow at a small local theater. Ooh, that sounds fun. Yeah, I'm excited. Tremors, one of my favorite B-movie adjacent films of all time. It's a very fun horror movie. Uh, kind of goofy. Kevin Bacon's in it. Kind Chekhov's goofy. pogo stick. All fun things. Because hmm, it's idea. still like a monster horror movie. It's just not. It doesn't quite pull off being scary in the way that like Alien does. But it's the same kind of genre, basically. It's just a little goofier at times. And I think that's okay. <laughs> oh, you get that fancy bow that Zelda uses. Ooh, I would like it's that. It's in this tower. There's like a little divot. I like certainly wouldn't mind somewhere. attempting to grab it. First, I gotta get this cheeky little sneak, sneaky sneak up here. <laughs> I know your secrets. It's cool that you can still go to the same lookout point here as, uh, yeah. as you had in the first game, but instead of being the highest point in the map, it's like not even really in the middle. Oh boy. Lost Woods has looked better. Um, anyway, you said there's like a little divot in this tower with a good bow in it? Yeah, it's got a part in like on one of the roof edges. Oh, where found it's like... it. Yep. Whoa, it's the Twilight Princess bow? Mm hmm. Okay, yeah, I'll. Fuck it. Let's. Alright, bye. Strong construct bow, my ass. <laughs> Hell yeah! We're never using this. It's too precious to me. I put all of the special one-off items in my house, intending to never once use them ever. Again. I couldn't fucking figure out. Like they wouldn't let me put on weapon mounts. Oh wait, I guess it's not uh -huh. the it's not the Terrytown house. It's the uh, it's the Tano. Oh, I was talking about the Terrytown house. The music's getting really dramatic, despite nothing happening. Zelda be like that. Yeah. Did you ring the bell? Uh, not yet. Oh wait, hold on. There it is. Oh, cool. It did something. Huh, how about that? Very rewarding. And we weren't even doing this for 6k. <laughs> oh, cool. We found the place where Ganon's nasty butthole was last game. Yeah. The fear I felt being able to just walk into that room this time. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. But I like that the game encourages you to do that, just to, like, get it out of your system. Yeah. They're like, listen, you and I both know it has to happen. Well, no, but they're legitimately like, oh, you should go there immediately. We totally saw Zelda up there. And it's like, I should go there immediately? Are you sure? <laughs> Hyrule Castle has historically looked more fucked up, but not by much. I was gonna say, that's a close call. I feel like it really depends on angle. Yeah. Maybe more gloom this time? Yeah. Sitting on top of a giant mass of stone and, like, gloom tentacles isn't its finest look. Mm. Oh, okay. Ah, goody, it's an Ascend Shrine. These are my favorite. You did it! I sure did, bud. Alright, does chat have any interesting questions? Good question. Um, how are people telling you to look at the stuff in the castle? Oh. Well, we are up so, here. Until I are. have to do something at 6k. So, mm -hmm. it hurt. Or maybe go get the champion's tunic or something. Oh yeah! I was... Considering having that be like a big stream reward, but if we're already here, it wouldn't be that hard. Up to you. It would be good to have. Just uh, have... smoked salmon, yay or nay? It's pretty good. 
you know, it's not the wildest yeah. thing in the world, but I can take it or leave it. Yeah. I tend to be a uh, bagel and cream cheese purist, which means uh, I've gotten don't tend to do the smoked salmon or the lox. Black on the streams before for being a big fan of an everything bagel toasted with just a lot of butter. <laughs> I think there is a beauty in the simplicity. <laughs> I understand it's not everyone's best bagel, but that's my ideal if I'm getting the bagel. That's fair. I just, uh... I just can't resist a good bagel with just, just way too much cream cheese. So that's, that's my Entirely thing. Fair. Mm -hmm. It's my end. I think I like to like the everything part of the bagel really shiny, you know? Mm. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Yay, we did it! All right, easiest lore I ever made. Whew. Excuse me. Let's see. So I, I know the approximate roots of the big, the main dragons, but mm -hmm. each of them moves like predictably but on a schedule that's a little hard to work around so we can like go to the right area like where we were with dinral it's like we were in the right area mm -hmm. we just you know didn't want to wait the whole 10 minutes it'd take her to undulate over yeah uh chat would like to know what your favorite breakfast is kind of depends on like how much time uh, and energy I want to I want to spend on breakfast, um, because I honestly like have had a lot of fun just doing very simple like rice krispies and milk. That that's legitimately just very pleasant for me. But also I really like um, you know full eggs, toast, sausage. Mm. You know, a real proper breakfast. Yeah, I feel like it really depends on the day. Like. I'll never turn down like a true diner, like two eggs, home fries, or hash browns, toast, and then some like Greek bacon or something breakfast. Like, just a plate of breakfast is ideal to me. Um, but I also like a sweet breakfast on occasion, like a croissant or something. Yeah. And I feel like it really just depends on like how hungry my feeling on a given day. Alright, let's grab that. Not the most helpful entrance, I guess. Oh, maybe you could ascend. Nope, you can't. Okay, cool. Not sure why this is here. The diner I like the most, though, does a really good veggie omelet, and that is that is the breakfast I dream about. It's just like I just want some home fries and this veggie omelet and a coffee, and I will be I. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, what do we got? This was the king's room last time. Is his diary still here? No, they moved it. Oh, cool! Found the Royal Guard boots. Nice. More pants. More pants. This one is arguably more boots than pants, but still, it covers. It's getting the like definition of the word covered. I mean, they are still very stupid looking, so you know it all works out. Mm -hmm. hmm. Exploring this before everything goes to shit. I mean, before everything goes to shit in a way that the plot happens. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Fun. More relaxing than in the previous entry. Just a just a little bit. Oh boy. Um, I want. I want to get to the throne room. Go up. <laughs> so resigned. But I I don't want to have to deal with the monsters. Can I want to just ascend a bunch. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. If I can just get under it. Then I should just be able to whoop, and then, you know, should work out just fine. Come on. <gasps> Ooh. No thank you, for several reasons. <laughs> Alright. I really like how dedicated they are to always making the Hyrule Castle music as intimidating as possible. Yeah. Can't just come to this castle and have a grand old time. No. It's always for bad reasons. Shit's always going wrong. 
<sighs> All right. Question uh, from chat: Are there other Zaba, sources Zaba, apart Zaba. from TV tropes where different tropes are defined? Um, TV tropes is the big one. It's kind of what it's for. Um, yeah. But oh, hold on. No, that's a stupid idea. Uh. I feel like I've only really seen it in like I went to film school, so mm -hmm. textbooks related to it sometimes would have definitions of particular tropes. Um, yeah. But other than that, like video essays, kind of in this vein of trope talk, so people who discuss and analyze media tend to do stuff on it. But like, I don't know if there's another repository quite like TV tropes. At least none that immediately come to mind. Like individual rituals might have lists of tropes in a particular series or something, but even then, probably link to TV tropes a little bit. Yeah, there isn't, as far as I know, a um, a repository that does the same thing TV tropes does that is not TV tropes. If that makes sense. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Where's this gonna take me? Another giant pile of gloom. I love it. Uh, Everyone's favorite. None of these are great options, but I think I think we can uh, floor as lava our way through one of these. Alright, that uh, might be manageable. Let's see. Oh, okay, that little side room would work. Uh, to those asking if I've seen Lego Monkey Kid, we talked about it a little bit earlier in the stream, but I haven't really seen any of it in an episode or so, and we're both kind of. Red's avoiding it for, I believe it was described as like, well, I do this thing all the time, don't want to consume too much of the other thing to help create characters. Yeah, I kind of just don't want to end up vision. accidentally stealing their designs. Yeah, and, uh, I don't know, I haven't gotten to it. <laughs> Alright, let me up. Is very good. Ah, uh, not quite where I wanted to be. Let's go back. <laughs> Alright, we want... Hey, that's not where it said it was gonna let me out. I think we can survive having a little swim if we absolutely must. Mm -hmm. Have you ever accidentally yanked yes. the design unintentionally? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess the question is really like, have you ever accidentally yoinked the design unintentionally and then found out about it later? Mm -hmm. I think you generally do like a really good job about it. And it's something very admirable your art style in your videos is that you do try to create the characters from the ground up based on the descriptions in the texts or the legends or the myths or just like the cultural descriptions of the clothing at the time mm -hmm. uh, and I think it results in a very distinct type of character design that really makes the really places them in the the worlds of their stories and whatnot in their myths. Thanks. Yeah. I, I do my best you know I, I don't want to get too fancy with or I bet I kind of, some of them have like, you know, memes or references or whatever. Odysseus being Solid mm -hmm. Snake. It's a classic old <laughs> meme joke. Um, but, uh... Alright, let's get our champion's tunic yeah. real quick. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I... Of fashion. I'm sure I've absorbed, like, some things from how... Just, you know, media I've consumed and... The ways that various things are portrayed, uh, certain like color associations, stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I try not to steal anyone's design wholesale. And if I have done that, I I've never run into a situation where someone's like, "Oh wow, this design is just like this other design," and I've gone, "Oh no, that's where I got it." For, like usually, it's just like they're really not that similar. Or like, oh, cool, that's a fun coincidence based on the fact that we both designed it yeah. depending on how it was described in the story it's from or whatever. Um. Yeah. No, it's, it makes a lot of sense. Like, 
If you're designing a Journey to the West character based on Ooh. the text of Journey to the West, it's likely that maybe they'll have a similar design to other Journey of the West adaptations, but that does yeah. not mean that you copped it from that. It just means that you're using the same source material. Yeah. Um, no. Hmm. Chat would like to know why you, why did you model Odysseus after Solid Snake? Um, oh, because his main thing in the Iliad was a stealth mission, and I thought that was really funny. <laughs> like, that's his whole thing he does in the Iliad. It's it's stealth mission stuff. Uh -huh. And I just thought that was really cute. Uh, and at the time, <laughs> I was really into the, um, specifically the Hi, I'm Daisy, uh, like, comic summaries of, um, uh, like, all of the Metal Gear games. Uh, I loved that art style. I couldn't figure out how it worked. Um, I guess we can just get rid of that one. Uh, and I, I don't know. I just thought it was really funny, so. <laughs> Those games are ridiculous, and I love them. I feel like I missed the boat on them. Like, I never played them growing up. Now I'm like, ah, they seem like they'd be fun. I didn't something. play them, but I did the thing where I, like, watched full cutscene playthroughs. Oh, God. Hmm. work like nah we're good um anyway i need to rewatch one of those because i was consolidating thoughts on giant robot stuff and uh <laughs> those games are pretty quintessential giant robot stuff huh. yeah i like the visual storytelling that, that this room has been completely untouched that they haven't like she- obviously yeah. she doesn't live here. They really haven't even done any restoration on Hyrule Castle other than establishing the base and the gatehouse. Oh great! My hat! Alright guys, where's the Royal Guard, uh, torso armor thingy? I know it's here. Oh, no. It is inevitable. Hmm. Oh, I guess maybe we... Uh, Royal Guard Torso is in Hateno Village. Oh, yeah! Because CC has rare armor in places, I remember now. Yep. Cool. Alright, well, last time we got the Hylian Shield, this time we got the Champion Slithers. So... Hell yeah. Yeah, it's all coming together. Alright. I think we said for 6k was try to ride another dragon, so Twas. gotta keep an eye out. Um, yep. let's see. Farash is more central high roll. Nadra, actually, how close is Kakariko? Oh, right. I was gonna say, uh, Kakariko feels like the one that you most consistently see a dragon around. Agreed, yeah. Um, it's a bit of a hike, but uh, we were nearish there. I want to say. Yeah, we saw Nadra when we were around here, and this is the place that has all those falling rocks that we can use to um, to go back up, which will let us go to Kakariko quickly, start some cutscenes maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Okay. All right, and then I guess we can just camp out around the uh, Kakariko yeah. entrance to the desk. See what you see. Uh, I just need some conveniently timed falling rocks to get me up, though. Hold on, where's that island? Because they were falling from the island. Aha! Found it! Any folklore or mythology stories I personally think that Red would have fun analyzing? Hmm. Um, I mean, it's well beyond the scope of a single myth or piece of folklore, but uh, All Men Are Brothers, The Water Margin, Outlaws of Marsh is my personal favorite of the classic Chinese God, text, and that margin. thing is a behemoth. It's a nightmare. It's, really fun. I... it's just so much character introduction. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I had to look it up because um, uh, I was a guest on the podcast Shonen Flop, where they talk mm. about 
very short-lived series that ran in Shonen Jump and stuff like that. Uh, and uh -huh. there was an attempt to make a water margin manga. It only ran for 25 issues, which is about the standard length of a cancelled Shonen Jump manga. And it, almost all of it is character introductions. <laughs> and that's just the experience of reading Outlaws of the Park. I was like... There's a lot of, like, really fun political stories and, like, you get a lot of fun action scenes and stuff in it as well. And there's, like, a lot of really interesting things going on in it. But it is just, like, so... There are so many characters in that goddamn <laughs> Yeah. I was, I was trying... Because basically every time they introduced a character... The, it was a special kind of difficult for me as well. Because every time they introduced a character, they would give the name of the character translated in English from Japanese. And then I would have to reverse engineer the Japanese. <laughs> and from there figure out the Chinese that I needed to look up. Uh. <laughs> so it would be like, this is 10 feet of green. And I'd be like, cool. And I could look, just Google that. And it would be like, this is 10 feet of green. She kicked a lot of ass. And I'm like, great. Thank you so much. No further questions. And then it would be like, <laughs> this is fucking like great ogre lord. And I'm like, that could be anything. <laughs> or like <laughs> earth beast. And I'm like, w what? <laughs> so... Yeah. Anyway, it was a very fun problem fun to have. Yeah. I was a, a Chinese major in college, mostly for language stuff, but you have to take a lot of like literature and culture classes in combination with that. So mm -hmm. anytime we get a passage from like <laughs> All Many Brothers, first of all, every teacher picked a different title for it. They're like, okay, this time, this semester, it's All Many Brothers. Next yep. semester, it's The Water Margin. Next semester, it's... Outlaws of the Marsh. Uh, Outlaws of the Marsh. And I'm like, these are all the same. This is the same. It's the same. It's the same thing every time. <laughs> you just gotta pick one, guys. Just pick one and stick with it. just need the three people who are in this department to get on the same page, because there are three names and you've all picked different ones. <laughs> um, but no, I have a lot of big soft soft. I, I like the like miscellaneous little stories that kind of connect and weave. It's, it's a little Game of Thronesy if I had to pick a modern equivalent. Yeah, that doesn't feel like a fair big cast. Everyone's got their own personal motivation. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I think objectively, Journey to the West is the most like solid story of the kind of classics of Chinese lit. Because there's also like Dream of the Red Chamber, which is very famous as well. Right. Um, they're like the three big pillars, but uh. Like, Journey to the West is the one that is the most accessible and also, you know, most popular for a reason. It's an incredibly well-crafted story. Yeah. Uh, it's engaging even now. The humor kind of carries through. The action carries through. The heart of the story is very clear. Yeah, um, it holds up a man, well. But, ah, shit. If I don't like all those funky guys with their funky names doing their funky little side stories. That's and the thing. The I, I do have a soft spot for just truly enormous casts. And I, I oh my god. How am I still being on fire? Uh, and I, I really respect just how many weird guys there are in Water Margin. It's just so fun. But man, it is not made for a Shonen Jump action-adventure manga. <laughs> yeah, not even a little bit. Um, also, shout out Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which is also one of the great classics. Right. Literature. Um, I tended okay. to be pretty... Journey to the West, Outlaws of the Marsh focused, but of course. Um, Romance Good of the stuff. Three Kingdoms is probably the... <laughs> well, I did do a lot of, like, Dream of the Red Chamber and stuff, too, but, like, we didn't... Uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms was sort of the one that I think I have the least exposure to. Mm. Um, I looked that one up, and it's so complicated, because it's, like... Yeah. It isn't... It's based on, like, an actual period in... in in Chinese history where there was like this massive, it's one of the many points where it's like, all right, the entire government exploded and a new one is going to form in like a hundred years. But until then it's all infighting and feudalism. Yeah. Uh, China has a lot of periods in its history uh, where you'll get just like, well, then the country completely broke apart into multiple little kingdoms and they were all infighting for a while. Um, and we're just gonna, we just, some of the best literature we've ever written is coming out of these periods, but man, was it a turbulent time for the government. Mm -hmm. Um, when, yeah, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms is based upon the, uh, years at the end of the Han Dynasty, I want to say, where it's the Three Kingdoms era, um, and it's kind of ended with the reunification of the land, but it was a period of, like, three major kingdoms, all one the other. 
a lot yeah. of fun. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, it's our girl again. <laughs> ah. Yay. She's the chief. She got a promotion. Mm. Both you and Princess Zelda are safe. Well, funny story. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but yeah, the... Uh, the water margin story, it's so interesting, but, like, it's... Oh. I feel like Journey to the West kind of hits a sweet spot of how episodic it is versus how much of an overarching yeah. plot it is, because water margin is intensely episodic. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But to the point where it's like, what's the overarching plot? Well, if you look at the overarching plot, it feels like nothing. It's like, there's a broad-scale conflict, they get, a, they get a secret base, there's a big fight, and they all die except for one guy, basically. Yeah. It's really just an opportunity to do a vignette about a bunch of outlaws that are in life, and like every single member of this outlaw group, like oh. interpersonal conflicts, and that just happens to be that it's all in the same novel. Um, uh, it's yeah, Journey to the West really nailed the episodic structure in a way that I don't think any of the other great classics ever quite yeah meet. Oh. Doesn't mean that they're not good in their own literary merits, but it's just a different style of writing. I think it's part of why Journey to the West is so widely popular and accessible even to modern readers, where some of the other classics don't quite uh, manage to gain that same level of widespread success. It's not to say that they haven't been influential. There's a lot of modern media that is based on Outlaws of the Marsh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, um, but inevitably Journey to the West just like out, it just pound wins. for pound outnumbers them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's also like. There are individual characters in um, Water Margin that are like I mean every single like every single one of those fucking hundred and eight guys is like a, the hero of their own story. That's the entire gimmick. Yeah. Some of them have very short gimmicks. I I had to look through <laughs> a list of these guys and like fucking reverse engineer which of them had been blandified into this redhead anime boy with a bad attitude that was allegedly one of them. And it's... Because <laughs> it was being layered through like six different layers of we have to make this a fun shonen battle manga. Mm -hmm. It was just such a mess. Uh, for the record, he was Magic Traveler, one of the least defined and least important guys in the entire Outlaws of the Marsh. <laughs> He's just, yeah. his gimmick is that he could tell, he, he like, used charms tied to his feet to go fast. He was a go fast speed boy. And then in the manga, they were like, if you go fast enough, it produces heat, right? Okay, he has fire powers now. He's, he's a red-headed, bad attitude, fire anime boy now. No one has ever mm. come up with this archetype before. So that's cool. I do want to shout out Dream of the Red Chamber for being about an actual rock. I think that's very cool of it. Hmm. It's really? a, a sentient stone uh, left over from like the mending of the heavens, like the building of the heavens, like falls to earth, and it's like, ah, I'm gonna be a real boy now, and it's 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 fun. How some um, of it. Yeah, it's not not quite as carefree and uh, ultimately noble, I would say, as many of the Journey of the West uh, core characters but it's up to some hijinks get some family drama going on it's, it's almost a more narrow scope story than like outlaws of the well definitely than outlaws of the marsh but like <laughs> even than like journey to the west that and romance of the three kingdoms um yeah, yeah. again I, my focus That's in nice. uh college was mostly on uh more modern fiction i did a lot with um anything kind of <laughs> a lot of focus was on the modern era from the pre-communist revolution to the postmodern literature time. Mm. And uh, there's a lot of really fascinating writing done. There is also a lot of really fascinating influence from uh, both the 
scholarly legacy of uh, China. As there's this really interesting relationship between scholarly writing in China and uh, government as a whole. And there's a history of like scholars being valued so much that um, what you end up with is a culture that heavily values writing and education. Um, and as a result, you get literature that is uh, attempting to be both entertaining and scholarly in many ways. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of a unique perspective because a lot of Western literature, like it's not that it's not smart, but it's not written to be an academic and government text all at once. And right. it, it's just an interesting like area to operate in. Um, I haven't had to speak very cohesively on it in a while, so honestly, I don't know if I'm doing a great job of it. No, but, it's uh, a very interesting space. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it's just... I, I love looking at culture through a literary lens. I think you get some really fun uh, comparisons that you can draw. Um, what was it? I had lost my train of thought. Hold on. Is it brains working? Going through different emotions? Mm. Um, it's more likely than you think. Yeah. But it also resulted in a lot of like state-sponsored media focusing on media and like making sure that there were still cultural texts because as much as there was a push when the original communist government took over to get rid of some of this cultural history and cultural text uh, in favor of propaganda, mm -hmm. um, that propaganda was still put through an artistic lens. Like you get a lot of like operas, like Chinese operas that are explicitly propaganda. Uh, and that's just not something you see in a lot of other places. What the? It's this interesting relationship between like oh, culture Christ. and government and uh, scholarship. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a very interesting angle on the whole thing. <sighs> Whoa! I've never not seen this just... before. Hmm. I mean, the thing about, like, oh, this text, it has, like, a... It's a story, but it also has, like, a political purpose. Like, half the fun of Journey to the West is knowing, like, this is very, very explicitly Buddhist propaganda mm -hmm. <laughs> about how yeah. Taoism is stupid and <laughs> Buddhism is the only true way. But, like, it's not saying, like, oh, the Taoist gods don't exist. It's saying, like, the Taoist gods constantly need to call the Buddhist ones for help, which is even <laughs> funnier. Like, the best yeah. possible way that could go. Yeah, it just speaks to like the, there's a deep relationship between literature and scholarship uh, in China in a way that it doesn't always operate in other countries um, or other areas of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. scholarly people are always going to write things, but to have scholarly people write fiction to justify their thoughts is not always uh, super common. And you really see Journey to the West is a great example of it. Yeah. Uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms is also an excellent example of it. <laughs> Also, a very cool fact about uh, not just China, but the whole sinographic sphere, as it's called, is that a lot of um, early communication and the reason that like Korean and Japanese have roots in uh, Mandarin is that a lot of business was done through written language because they were operating for a while on the same written language. Uh, Chinese being the base of it, and hmm. the, the spoken languages and the modern written iterations developed later. So a lot of business. Uh, was conducted in what is referred to as the Sinographic Sphere. It's this like family-related languages right. uh, through writing, which is huh. itself a very cool effect. Yeah. So you have a lot of essentially, it's it's like the equivalent of something that's mutually intelligible, except it's it's almost the opposite of that. It's like the the spoken languages are not mutually intelligible, but the writing, mm -hmm. all the important bits, you can just get across. Yeah, that's why uh, in if you look at even modern Japanese, like obviously there are katakana and <laughs> kanji and everything like i do not speak japanese i don't read it mm -hmm. but there are a lot of characters that are the same between chinese and like modern mandarin and modern japanese especially for core concepts like love or family right uh, and that's because those have they have the same root language they're based on the same original writing system even if they are spoken completely differently and used in completely different ways now um korean has completely 
differentiated itself. It, there was, uh, I, again, I don't speak Korean. I'm not as well versed in Korean uh, history and language, but essentially like a king who was like, we got to get everyone on the same system. They have more of like an almost an alphabetic uh, writing system and oh. spoken language. So it's completely different now, but again, based on the same original root language initially. Um, yeah. Hmm. I want to say also Thai, but I might be misremembering that one. Oh no, Vietnam. It was Vietnamese. Uh, thank you, chat. Uh, also was in the Cenographic Sphere, also used Mandarin before history happened. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Ain't that just the way? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm trying to remember where the hell the uh, gloom, where the, the portal is. Portal. I want the big hole in the ground where I can go see the dragon. <laughs> I think I'm on the wrong side of the village. Oh no, not the dragon! It's our curse, Dragon Rush Part 2. It's funny because at the very beginning of this stream, we saw two dragons in a row. We saw uh, Nadra and Farash both just flying around. <laughs> uh, chat would like to know what our favorite obscure mythological monster is. Huh. Hmm. Honestly, the fucked up body snatching witch from the sun, uh, sun Maiden and the Crescent Moon is indescribably horrifying, and I'm so glad she exists. <laughs> like, um, yeah, yeah. So, Good. we just love fucked up little guy. Mm. I really like the um. It's kind of more of a genre of monster, but uh, the Jiangshu is the hopping Taoist priest, commonly translated as the Chinese vampire. Oh, yeah. Uh, really, they don't really share any vampiric traits other than being undead, so I don't know if that's an accurate moniker, but that's the usual go-to. Uh, but just like a really neat variant of an undead. Yeah. Based on, uh, based on like a practice of transporting uh, the deceased by kind of like walking them that resulted in this look of like the hopping... Oh, yeah. Undead. Um, which is an interesting, like, correlation between, like, you very rarely do have such a direct, uh, suggested influence, um, between, like, a, a fictional creature and the probably real world events that inspired them. Not the only, you know, form of lore obviously feeding into it, but mm. a suggested connection. Also, some really great Hong Kong uh, martial arts cinema with the tension in it, which yeah. is probably really mad. That Vampire vs. Vampire, it's great, you should watch it. That is interesting <laughs> to me. It feels like it would just be an incredibly big challenge to uh, choreograph a fight like that, where one of the participants I... typically walks by hopping. I mean, it kind of feeds into the very acrobatic martial arts movements in some ways. Um, hmm. It's its own. It's not like the wow. most popular monster that you see in this, but Spooky Encounters, uh, Close Encounters of the Spooky Kind is probably the most famous <laughs> movie with the junction in it. But uh, I did write my column pieces on this. And there's a lot of them, mm. um, and uh, it, it's it's an interesting one to have show up because it is rec immediately recognizable, uh, and distinctive in its movement, and it usually takes the appearance cool. of some sort of Taoist priest uh, in these movies. You fill in the blanks in your own. Um, but man, <laughs> they get to do some cool flips and stuff with the, <laughs> with the junction. We love some cool flips and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it usually tends to be more like a horror monster. Like they're not showing up too much in um, uh, less spooky Hong Kong cinema. Mm. That does make sense. Yeah. Some movies do a great job of really leaning into the hopping thing and letting them kind of move in that way and fight in that way and some of them are not quite as uh committed to the bit but either way great time yes really cannot recommend i mean close encounters or encounters of the spooky kind is an incredible film and a great entry point into it um mm. i just i love vampire versus vampire i think it's so funny <laughs> <laughs> i just i really get it like they dig up basically dracula and then there's also just like a uh, child Jiangshu who's in the movie and it's a great time it's just, huh. there's a lot of martial arts going on there's other vampires who are in it it's a fun time it's a little silly but in a, in a good way okay Nadra is on her way 
A lot of cool monsters in mythology and folklore. Yeah, a lot of very wacky dudes out there. One thing people are good at, coming up with wacky dudes. <laughs> All right. We just. Eh. I think getting up on this dragon's back is probably going to be the last thing we want to do this evening. Yeah. Feels so weird to end a stream after like only four-ish hours, and yet <laughs> you know how things are. Yeah. It's been a ridiculously long day. <laughs> This is your third stream today. I don't think anyone's going to be faulting you for wrapping it up a little early. Yeah. Yep. And I had a thing in the middle of that, too. But it's good. Uh, yeah. We are, after all, fundraising for an extremely important cause that is very, very pertinent. Because it literally just happened today. Yes. So. Thank you to everyone who's been helping us get this high. We're at nearly 6K. Mm -hmm. um, if you are able to donate to help with the Hawaiian wildfire relief. Uh, it is incredibly appreciated if you are unable to donate, but you've just been tuning along for the stream. Hell yeah, man. Thanks for coming and hanging with us. Yeah. Um, huh. The charity that sure. we're donating to is matching all of the donations up to a certain amount, uh, which means that the money that's been donated today will be matched and go even further to support mm. uh, the wildfire relief. So seriously, thank you guys. You are awesome. Yeah. You guys are killing it. Hell yeah. yeah. Red, the three streams that you were on was Ludo Histories yes. uh, stream earlier. With he was playing Stray Blue Gods. As well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then we did the Rolling with Difficulty mid-season Q&A. And yeah. now this. Now this. This one was a later edition. When I started the day, mm -hmm. I had three commitments, and by the end of the day, I had five. Mm-hmm. We're all just trucking along. Mm-hmm. I gotta record a movie struck episode tomorrow. <laughs> oh my god. Not till 1 p.m., I'm fine. Oh, good. Now that we're remembering. Thank you to okay. everyone who has just suddenly been donating. Oh my god. Thank you for the $112 donation from Ooh. Anonymous, putting us over 6K! Great! Now I can get up on the dragon's back when the dragon gets here. <laughs> Very generous of you guys, seriously. Thank you for yeah. uh, donating. Alright, we gotta. Now that I, because I actually have a little time while we very slowly wait for Nadra to make her way over. Mm -hmm. Slowly becoming higher resolution, I can actually like check the chat and stuff. See what's what. Yeah. Whew. Favorite cryptid you've ever heard of? Oh man, those little guys that are just like pants with heads. Those are very <laughs> funny to me. I think it's like the Fresno Nightcrawler or something like that, which with, with a name oh, like boy. that, you'd think it would be something rad, but it literally just looks like someone who's like pulled their fucking sweatpants up over their shoulders and is Incredible. just walking around, just vibing. Well, now I want my answer to be those guys also, <laughs> but um, I feel like I gotta rep the Jersey Devil a little bit just because I've driven through the Pine Barrens enough times going down the shore. Um, I just think we need to start thinking funky. of New Jersey overall as sexier. <laughs> I don't agree with Brian David Gilbert on that point, but I respect <laughs> the joke anyway. Oh, well, now it lets me. Tell me more about these. Uh, tell me about these little dudes. Well, I don't <laughs> know all that much. These... Hey, wait a minute. Have I had the Hyrule Compendium this whole time? Oh wait, I think I knew that. All right, cool. Never mind. Carry on, everybody. Um, but yeah, I don't know that much about them. The, I think it's one of those things where it's like. This showed up on a security camera, like on trail cam footage in Appalachia, which is like, okay, cool, so just don't fuck with it. If it's in Appalachia, mind your business. <laughs> that mountain range is older than Saturn's rings and the evolution of bones. Yeah. We don't fuck with whatever's in there. <laughs> Some things are just meant to be left best alone. Mm hmm But, uh, I think they're one of those cryptids that, like, because they look stupid, they don't really have, like, cryptid hunters after them in force. It's just like, mm -hmm. oh, look at those dumb little guys. Just hanging out. Just being dudes. Just, just guys being dudes. Just guys being dudes. What's the most horrific monster you've ever heard of or made? Uh, one of them is currently featuring in my comic. Which will be updating at 3am, which at the current rate I'm going, I might be up for. 
some point I realized I could just make a monster by giving a gecko a bunch of extra legs, and that's been my big coup of monster creation. Ah, the gecopede. Yeah. He's just a big. He's just a big guy. Just a little big guy. A little big guy. I feel like most of the monsters that really haunt my dreams come from D and D sessions, where Austin just decides, "What if I just put like the most horrifying thing on the ship right now?" Yeah, Austin will just casually come up with the most intense nightmare fuel I've ever heard of, and then we'll we all just have to live with that. We all just have to move on with our lives. Okay. I do not have sufficient cold weather protection for this. Or spicy When foods. have you ever had weather-related protection in this stream so far? That's right. In fact, fuck it. The shirt's coming off. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Great. It builds character, Link. Relax. Uh-huh. <laughs> See, he's fine. We're all just hanging out on a dragon. I wonder if we have... Do we have any fire weapons? No! Why would we have fire weapons? That would be silly. Uh... Hmm. Hmm. A little awkward to pull out and fuse anything right now. I wouldn't want to be awkward. I wonder if I can just, like... Hold on. I have an idea. Can I just, like... Oh, he's still cold. Ah, Too cold for only fans. This isn't helping. I don't understand why not. <laughs> Hold on. Maybe maybe we can... Maybe we're not losing hearts that fast anyway. No, it's not that bad. Apples or something. I wonder. If I can, like... Do I have any... Rubies? I think we might have to go fish on that one. Also, I don't want to waste a ruby just so I'm not cold. What a waste that would be, after all. Uh. Oh, he's so chilly. It's fine. What I really want to do is... Oh! Hold on. There they are. We want the back spikes. Nope. Yeah! Doing your best. I'm, do I'm doing my best. Link's doing his best. I'm having a good time. If you're up here, you might as well get like a scale or something, too. It's true, actually. Nope. Uh. Great. This is really going rough for you, huh? <laughs> I'm having a good time. Link is the only one who's having trouble. Admittedly, losing the scale down into the depths is pretty rough. The scale might have gotten stuck on that sidewall. No, it it bounced off and fell. I saw it. Ah, there. A little glowing point in the dark. Ah! I see it! Slowly disappearing behind. Where the fuck is it? Okay. Is it not that glowing point? It is. <laughs> but at least we're not freezing anymore. See? Thank goodness for small uh, favors. Win win! Yeah! Admittedly, we have to play a little floor as lava to go get it, but that's fine. All right, Link, we're just gonna real carefully, just, just carefully, carefully, floor is lava, floor is lava, floor is lava. Yeah. All right. Okay, we're fine. Let's put a shirt back on. It's not funny anymore. Great. But if I have to put on a shirt, it's gonna have no armor value whatsoever. Let's just get one of these tasty light roots while we're here, so we can come back whenever we want. Because who could say no to such a welcoming locale? Okay, that's not the closest one. Oh no, what if there were like gloom hands down there? <laughs> I th honestly, there are not enough gloom hands in the depths. I think there's an okay amount of gloom hands in the time. No, <laughs> they could do so much worse for us. I think I'm happy that they didn't. <laughs> Where did Major go? Oh, found him. Cool. All right. Very picturesque. Yeah. 
Let's see, where are we headed? Hmm. Well, that never goes well. But overall, that went great. We got a picture of Nadra, we got body parts. Everything's coming up Link today. All right, just lower his level, lower his level. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. You know what culture has some really cool folkloric monsters? Mm hmm Filipino. Oh, yeah! Some of, like, the most interesting concepts I've ever heard of, and, like, um... I feel like I don't get enough exposure to it in general. Uh, the little tidbits I've found have been really astounding. I do need to do it like an actual deep dive at some point because there's a ton of yeah. just wild monsters up there, which is fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like an academic text by any means, uh, and it's not like a perfect uh, show. I haven't read the comic it's based on, but I watched the animated series on Tresse? Netflix because it just kind of popped in my eyes. Yeah, Tresse. Yeah. Like, based on Filipino folklore, there's a lot of really interesting um creatures in it uh and it's a nice little like taste i feel like i wouldn't i wouldn't stop there if you're that, really interested <laughs> that show was but. another instance of the uh age-old phenomenon of like for the first 90 percent of it i thought it was all good and then i decided it was am i st oh <laughs> i got yeah. stuck in a hot air balloon basket and then like the, the way it ended made me realize it was like 60 percent good <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it was. Ba it's based on a comic, and I wonder because I haven't read it if the comic is paced better. Because it did feel like they just sort of had to end the show, <laughs> like at a, like halfway through, they're like, "Oh wait, we have to end the show in like three episodes." You didn't um, like the part where the entire final episode is just the bad guy holding the main character hostage while he tells her the plot. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that was the good part. <laughs> <laughs> There was so much I did like about that show, which makes me think maybe I should go back and read the comic and see if it's, if it mm. make, if it kind of paces itself in a way that makes it better. Maybe, maybe. Uh. All right, I'm just gonna check out this. Uh, if, if this is another master master Koga fight, I'm. Uh... I'm not going to do that tonight, I think. But I don't think he's here right now. Hmm. Which means the odds are good. There might be another treasure chest, perhaps with more pants. Indeed. Admittedly, I don't have a Sheikah sensor, so I can't find the treasure chest efficiently, but you know how it is. Ah, it goes that way sometimes. Mm hmm Hmm. Well, there is a Yiga base here. Well, oh, I just don't want to deal with Master Koga again. They said he wasn't here. <laughs> be pretty ballsy of Master Koga to go hole up under the village full of actual Sheikah. <laughs> It'd be something, all right. I'm What's you guys' opinion on Chicago Deep Fish? It's good. Can't beat a solid inch of mozzarella. It's too much. No. I don't want to have to eat my pizza with a fork. I want to just bite into a crunchy little gravy and cheese. Baroni, maybe. You don't need to use a fork if you're not a coward. Huh. I feel like if they're going to give it to me on anything that is not a itself, its own plate, I'm not, I'm not here for it. This place is... Oh! Found... Oh, well, hold on. Let's do this first. Hey, buddy. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, I'll deal with you later. I'm getting that treasure chest first. <laughs> Not today, Satan. <laughs> Take you. Alright, great. Now, let me up. I wish uppies, thank you. Yes, good. Good. The power is mine. Just a little bit more. Just a little further uppies. Well, that's why you need to get a real good Lou Malnati's butter crust. Alright, let's go. Yeah. Great, alright. <clears throat> I'm here for my 6 o'clock ambush appointment, sir. Let's grab you. 
Here, had a tomato pie. Tomato pie? Mm. Yeah. How am I supposed it's to basically act? like a thick, bready crust, mm. and then just tomato, kind of like gravy or sauce or whatever. Um, and then sometimes people will sprinkle like mm. a crumbly parmesan on it or something, but generally you can just serve it just tomato side. It's solid. Mm. That's like, be that is the food of the beach to me. Mm. <laughs> you go, it's usually pretty cold, it gets sandy immediately. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Oh, my health is not the best right now. Thank you, Emperor Tiger Star, for hanging out and also going to the Tiger Star! Hey! Sorry, slightly busy. I don't want to disappoint these uh, lovely fellas during my. We good? Yeah. How about that? No Master Koga in sight. No. I wonder if, like, if I'm just here too early for him. I don't know, because I didn't encounter him at every underground mine. I didn't like... either, but, like, there's an order to them, and I also didn't... Well, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I think some of them are just Iga, and then some of mm. them are Koga. That would make sense. I don't know if there's, like, an order to it. I think it's just kind of... There's just, like three or four specific ones that Koga's at. Hmm. Ooh. Oh, I see. That was how I was supposed to get that treasure chest. Well, you know, it can't be tied down. Any of the ones that make you feel higher do kind of feel a little redundant, given that you have the go immediately through things ability, and mm -hmm. then rockets. But that's what I kind of like about this game is that you can just well, that's what I kind of that's what I really like about this game is that you really can just sort of do whatever you want. Half of those like yeah. ascend shrines or whatever you can cheese with recall. Recall is the most busted thing ever. It's great. Yeah, man. All right. Make stuff go. Although I do miss Revali's Gale every single day. I also miss Revali's Gale. But you know what I don't miss? The guy it was attached to. I miss Revali. I think he added some much needed angst to the game. Oh yeah, because there's no angst in this game. For absolutely Fun no angst. reasons, chat. Rock piles. Finish the game. <laughs> oh, those things. Getting the ones with the funky weapons. Yeah. I mean, if the whole purpose is a grocery run. Funky weapons are good. Hey, stop it. Mm-hmm. All right. Whew. Oh, we got up on the dragon back. That was pretty good for 6k. <laughs> Come on, chat. We can't be crying about the events of this game. We, we must be strong for various reasons. <laughs> All's well. Yeah. I like that in the first game, it was like, something terrible happened. And I'm getting the sneaking suspicion that every one of these dead guys I'm running into was once very dear to me. And then you kind of, it's kind of a hell of your own creation, which I like because as you seek out your memories, you get more attached to these people who you know from the beginning are long dead. Uh, and like, you want to know the story of how that happened. And that's interesting. Yeah. Sorry, I had a big yawn and I completely zoned out. It's all good. I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna call this soon so we can like sleep and stuff. Sweet. Uh, I was gonna jump off if we hit two AM my time anyway. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, well you know, you gotta have standards. It's gotta be yeah. a cutoff point eventually. Um I don't have to do anything till one PM tomorrow, we're good. Great. But uh But yeah, I like how uh in this game, because you're sort of like you know what's up at least vaguely like link does not have amnesia in this game so we the audience follow along with the general expectation that we know what's going on i like that mm -hmm. because that means when shit goes south we we have like the slow building horror of figuring things out without necessarily the um ah that's why i couldn't see past it it was a wall 
It's all these little mysteries that I just love solving in this game. Wait, what the? Anyway, um, this game is good. Yeah. I'm so sleepy. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's freaking cuz. Yeah. It's all good. All right, well, we did the thing. We rode on the dragon's back. And I found pants at various locations. That was cool. All right, we're going to go back to the surface now. Yes. It, it's not a proper stream if we don't start and end it. Look at landing. It's only right. It's where we look out from. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. This is the real <laughs> girls' night energy. Yeah, I hit a wall about five minutes ago. I was like, nah, I'm getting sleepy. Yeah, I was. I, I can like play the game well enough that my my mouth can just go on autopilot while I just play, but doesn't always work. Sometimes, uh -huh. sometimes your brain just no brain anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna climb this. I've expounded all of my college thesis topics and now I have nothing left. <laughs> I'm but a shell of a human. Now that oh hold on. We need to show off the booty shorts we acquired. They're oh yeah, somehow... that's essential. You need to still be in those when the next thing starts, honestly. Sure. There are no good shirt options. Can we make a fashion <laughs> show? We found the um, worst one. What? Booty shorts? Gotta go booty shorts. Um, I need I need the uh, beret. I feel like it's essential. I hate this. <laughs> Somehow he looks more naked because he has the boots on. <laughs> Good. Leave it it's like, like this. It's It'll like... be a little surprise for you when you next open this game. No. It's like yes. how it's like how naked with socks is more naked than just regular naked. You gotta do it. You gotta. It'll just be a fun little surprise for future Red. <laughs> Think of how much you'll laugh and giggle when you realize, ah, to make his little booty shorts and his little hat. <laughs> yep, that's what I'll be thinking for sure. Okay. Oh my god, alright. Maybe I'm right. <laughs> yeah, 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 you are. Uh, if I don't stream this again before the big stream... <laughs> then it'll be even funnier. I'm definitely <laughs> gonna forget! This is gonna be an incredible little rem little treat for us later on. Oh, we'll like, oh my god, remember the little bit we one for seven a Eastern Standard Time? <laughs> there's people on that Discord I'm gonna want to be able to impress, and then they're gonna be like, oh, that's how you dress your Link? And I'll be like, no, it was a bit! It was a ha-ha funny! <laughs> you're real bad boy like behavior to show up in a funky little outfit. <laughs> these are literally the only two articles of clothing that we've gotten so far that I hate. <laughs> that's what makes it better. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this is what makes it perfect. <clears throat> no, absolutely. Um... Oh my god, okay, uh, thank you all for joining in <laughs> for this extremely imp um, impromptu and blatantly unwise uh, fun bonus charity stream that we just did. Hell yeah. Um, and thank you to everybody who donated over $6,000 to the Hawaiian uh, wildlife, uh, wildfire, I knew I was gonna fuck that up, wildfire relief. <laughs> um, the um, place that we are donating to whose name is in the thing fucking and yet is still escaping me center for national hawaiian something i'm sorry i looked this up earlier anyway they're really good and we like them so get some sleep dude eventually everyone needs to know that the cnha is cool and we like them and if I go to their website, I will even remember what their full name is. Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement. I looked this up like four times today. But then a bunch of other shit happened. You know how it is. <sighs> okay, well thanks for tuning in. This was really fun. If you're watching the VOD, uh, this donation thing is running indefinitely. Um, I can't promise that the uh, CNHA is going to still be matching donations up to 250k at the time you get this. They might have gotten all their donations in. Um, but at minimum, you will still be sending money along to a very helpful and worthy cause to help out some people who desperately need it right now. So, um, that's cool if you have cash to burn and want to help out. Um, 
we fucking gotta go sleep. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, Thanks boy. for supporting the fund and for tagging along and no one what the outfit looks like. Please, I think this will be a great little bit for later. <laughs> um, I'm excited to see how this plays out. If I sleep, this is how you put the long con, guys. This is how you do little jokes, little <laughs> running gags. If I sleep deprive myself okay. enough, I definitely will not retain the memory of this event. So, <laughs> okay. no question is, will you stream again before the big stream? That is that is the question, isn't it? All right. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, and there's an, an actual normal video that's going up tomorrow morning. So stay tuned yep. for that. All right. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.